Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Screen Chronicles. My name is Steve. And I'm Colby. And today we are talking about The Last Kingdom, Season 2. And just like our uh, last couple episodes, we're going to split this up into two parts. So today we're doing yes. episodes 1 through 4 of Season 2 of The Last Kingdom. So jammed packed. It is. Every episode. So it's yeah. just impossible to get through. We we thought we could get through entire season one in one episode, and we were like, <laughs> we were looking at the clock. Halfway through, we were like, this isn't going to happen. We're, we're not even close. We're like at the end of episode two, and we're like, it's because it's you can't, I don't think it's possible to just zip right through it. I mean, there's so many important things that happen, um, you know, in each episode. Uh, each episode. Like, so there's no time wasted. No. They're they're and they're dense with with content and uh, story that carries over character building. It's it's all important mm-hmm. stuff too. It's not just like a waste. It's it's all something that builds onto something else, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're it's all fun stuff. It's all like interesting. It's not yeah. like boring build. It's epic and even like they even, I think they go to the extra length in the show that even like the little exchanges they have when nothing big is happening, they work hard to either make them funny or heartfelt. Yes, yes. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that even when there's times where they're, they're just talking, they're sitting around a table talking, which in other shows might be a little boring, mm-hmm. like they're really good at making it. Yeah, like you uh, said, there's there's some sort of like real specific... Uh, Last Kingdom humor that we both like that they it's a, they fit yeah in. it's like its own style or something just like really emotional and this season for me is like just so emotional I mean season two yeah this this yeah. is probably I mean I haven't rewatched um, season three again yet I think I've only watched season three two times um, I just but, finished watching rewatching yeah. season three. But uh, I think season two is my favorite season of the show. I mean, it's it's got action. Every episode's pretty dense, and it's got so much freaking heart in it, man. I got so much heart. It definitely has my favorite storyline and a couple of my favorite characters. So I, I thought before I rewatched season three, I thought the same as you. And I, I still probably lean towards season two, but season three is also like really, really epic. I think here's the thing. Season three lacks something that season one and two absolutely nail every time. Having awesome Vikings. Yes. Yeah. Season three had some new Vikings. Didn't do anything for me. We'll get to that when we do our season three episode. Yeah. But season two introduces two of the coolest Vikings that we meet. Yes. And I, I did not see them coming into that. Um, I mean, yeah. we'll talk about that in a little bit, but and in fact, um, we'll probably we'll talk about them this episode, but we'll really probably talk about them in our next episode. Yeah, our part two uh, about season seasons, two. Uh, our, uh, episodes five through eight. Yeah, correct. But uh, anyway, though, I mean, we we talked last time, you know, uh, season one. So check that out. We we summarize, we t- discuss, we review, but. We, we've already said before, if you watched our, you know, our top 10 TV shows, 2010s, this is probably our favorite show. So, I mean, there's there's not much we can, you know, say or complain about that you probably haven't already heard. I mean, it's right. it's so good. I mean, if you want to hear exactly what we have to, what we thought, what we like about it, uh, you know, check out our top 10 uh, shows, 2010s, or check out our, our part one of season one of The Last Kingdom. We really go in depth, but. Yes. Uh, I guess specific to this season, what do you like about this season? Uh, non-spoiler thoughts here. Let's see. So they introduced some awesome characters. Um, some of my favorite characters in the whole show. They also, this season I think has some really intricate storylines. I think it, we've said this before, but it's almost like it's split up. It could be two different seasons. Yeah, the first yeah. half of season two could be its own season. And the second half of season two could be in both storylines are phenomenal gut-wrenching i mean this show makes you feel all sorts of different ways we've, we've said it before it makes you laugh a lot 
but this season really comes into its own um with like the heartbreak or the like the emotion not to say season one doesn't because season one absolutely does but season two like won't make you fall to your knees and cry <laughs> i mean it tears I, you apart i i got some watery eyes uh episode four of this part and i i remember the first time we were watching it through mm-hmm. i was always like surprised this season about things that they were doing and like it it didn't like the emotion was always like hitting me but i didn't know how to react because i was like always just so surprised uh, yes. they they do something in this season uh we won't say yet but uh Uhtred finally does something that he was you know they set up in season one and i was not expecting them to get to that uh, no. You know, it felt like so early in, in the show. I mean, halfway yeah. through its second season, it does this, you know, this major plot point that it was hitting at uh, before. And you're like, wow, I can't believe they accomplished that. And it just it just felt like it was just like too much to take in, honestly, at that oh. at that time. And then I was watching we I already watched it, you know, again after that. And then I just watched it again the other day, episode four. And man, oh, man. That just at the end at the end of that, I was just like my eyes were kind of watery. I was like, this is like the best freaking stuff, man. I tell you what, it's amazing. It's amazing, man. So, anything else that you loved about season two before that's non-spoiler, Steve? No, I mean it's 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 like you said. After Abba left, there was definitely some Viking shoes that needed filled, and I think they delivered. Um, like you said, we yeah. won't really have much to talk about that, but. Um, it, it's it's pretty good i mean they've, we've still got all the deception all the you know the twists the betrayals the action the battles yeah you know and we get to see we get to see like utrid's crew grow yes uh, right. so this Uhtred... is really the season where he gets really into how we've been saying bro his bro group yeah and the, yeah it really kind of comes together and that yeah the one that kind of lasts you know not to say he didn't have bros in season one, but he gets like his his group. He starts getting his his core his core his Uchen core group yeah group here yeah and it's it's really satisfying and this is where we I really start picking up on the the bro moments first time through and you're just like man that guy's great that guy's great too you know? you know and you just wish you could just join them yeah you know and be part of them and saying you wish Alexander Draymond would just ask you to come hang out and be part of his last oh kingdom my god, god. Yeah. you wish dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a cool dude i will say though we'll be talking today about probably my least favorite and not because it was a bad episode but because i don't like watching it yes. um because it's painful probably one yes. of my least favorite last kingdom episodes that i i, I can't say least favorite because it's a good episode it's uh, the it most still. frustrating it's, it's frustrating most frustrating and then I have, like you said, one of my most frustrating episodes is in this part, and one of my favorite episodes is in this part too. Yep. So, that's that's what you have to look forward to, and we we're gonna like last time we're gonna talk about uh, our best moments from each episode, our best bro moments. We're gonna give like a summary, you know, yeah. review and RL or, or you know eccentric thoughts about everything as we go. So that's what so, you gotta look forward to, guys. Yeah, so I think we should start by kind of recapping where we left off from season one. And I will guess I'll say this is a, this is not a spoiler for season two, what we're about to talk about, but this is a spoiler for season one if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Um, we'll just say we get... spoiler alert now. Spoiler yeah. alert for season one, spoiler alert for season two. We're going to really just get into it now. We gave you our thoughts, so okay. we're all free reign from here, guys. Yeah. So where do we leave off, Steve? So I, last time where we left off, Uhtred, uh, son of Uhtred, he was son of Uhtred, father of a deceased Uhtred, brother of a That's, deceased Uhtred, brother of a deceased Uhtred as well. Yeah. A lot of Uhtreds, a lot of Uhtreds. My God, but any he, grandfather had to be Uhtred, right? He had to have been. Right. Uhtred, Uhtred, there was, there was, you know it. Yeah. But anyway, uh, where we left off, though. So Uhtred, though, he was born a Saxon, grew up with Danes, so he's this guy with a real unique perspective. Mm-hmm. He's kind of a Dane, kind of a Saxon. 
trying to find his, where he falls on that line. Yeah, and you get really get that. That's really part of the show is his both perspectives. But but his he, big goal is to get to Bebenber, his home right. His correct. He has yeah. the right to that land. So that his kind of inspires him. Right. So that kind of is what his incentive is to get involved with the Saxons, although he was raised by the Danes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he just kind of forms these ties along the way. Yeah, and, he meets yeah. Uh, King Alfred, who, uh, as we mentioned before, this is like a historical fiction show. Uh, so there's a lot of fictional parts like Uhtred and a lot of his, you know, really anything that he does is, is fiction. But uh, there's a lot of historical points such as Alfred... Uh, the Battle of Ethington, a lot of actual Vikings that are in this show, like Abba, Guthrum, uh, they're all, you know, real Vikings that were raiders at the time. Yes. Um, and this was in the 9th century. Uh, these things were happening. So uh, Uhtred meets Alfred. Alfred's trying to unite all these Anglo-Saxon uh, kingdoms and tribes mm-hmm. to r- come together and unify as England, all under his crown as Alfred. Um, yes. Meanwhile, Danes and Vikings are raided. Uh, like I said, Uhtred gets captured and becomes one of them. Um, but when Uhtred grows up, he actually works with Alfred, like you said. Um, he helps Alfred out. He becomes a man of Alfred. Uh, he becomes a really good warrior for them. He teaches them a lot of things. Eventually, he fights with Alfred against a horde of Danes at the Battle of Ethington, which I'm yes. pretty sure is a real battle. Uh, and they won in 878 A.D. Um, uh, Guthrum, the leader of the, the Danes, was yeah, baptized, yeah. became yeah. Ethelstan. Uh, so he's not really a, a threat anymore. Some of our other main characters were taken uh, captive. Uh, Ragnar and Breda, two of Uhtred's friends who were on the Dane yep. side. They've been um, taken as prisoners. Yeah. So Vikings, they... After that battle, um, they have like their own part of England called Daneland, but they're not really supposed to be raiding anymore. Meanwhile, Kjartan, uh, a guy who killed Uhtred's Dane family, he's held up in, in a fort right now. Kjartan held up in a fort with Sven. They have Dunholm, his... Right? Dunholm, yes. With yep. his uh, Dane sister, Tura. Tura. Yes. And so that's one of his... His goals was to have a blood feud against them with Ragnar, save her, kill Kjartan to avenge his father. Uh, meanwhile, right now, uh, Siegfried and Eric are these yeah. two new Viking guys that are on the scene. Um, and yeah, yeah, so that's so, so that's, that's what, kind of where we we start off with episode one of uh, uh, season two. So yeah, it, it it I think it starts with Alfred reflecting over the battle. Right. Right. They're painting. Yeah. They're painting the battle on the walls. Then we meet. I mentioned before the Vikings in season two are strong, and we meet two awesome Vikings, Siegfried and Eric, the brothers. Yes. So we don't really know much about them when we first meet them. We just we kind of we kind of realize real quick that Siegfried is a pretty bad dude, pretty raw dude. He he's got mohawk. Yeah. Big, he's Beard. Beard. He's very aggressive. He headbutts a priest, you Headbutt, know. Yeah. And then Eric, his brother, is a little bit more tame, a lot more tame. You can just see that they're very close, though, right away. Yeah. His, his um, brother's, just like you said, he's pretty level headed, but you can still tell he has a lot of authority, oh, you yeah. know, from the men and his brother. And they're because both war hungry. Yeah. Yeah. And they're both they war both, hungry. They do want to capture. Yeah. They're both war hungry. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's kind of where we meet them. Um, they're at um, Efferwich. Mm-hmm. I guess that's modern-day York. Is that right? Yeah. I, I, I Every time in the show they say Efferwich, but then when they do the thing with the words where the, the words, like, yeah. go from one thing and switch, it, it translates to York. Well, I think, so it, I I think if... they're, doing, they're doing what it was then and yeah. what it is now. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and then... So I think that's modern day York and they have, they have taken over Efferwich mm-hmm. um, and we kind of meet them and Siegfried and Eric are going to fight the Scots. Yeah. They, they have this whole area and they decide to leave to go raiding in Scotland and they, 
they leave uh, one of their other Danes in charge, Heston. Heston, yes, Heston. At this time, he becomes a real prominent character in season three. Yeah, um, and I would say he's a fairly strong Viking character. I think he's a good Viking. I do. He's, he's solid. He's, he's a solid Viking. Funny moments. He has some he's, funny moments. He's, you know, you don't like him, but he. I he's think all right. He's a good Viking. Yeah. He's, he's a good Viking so, for the show. So he's left in charge, and there's a priest they show who goes and tries to convince his because he's been inspired by Alfred. Yes. And what they did at the Battle of Ethendon, he kind of uses that inspiration to convince his brothers to rise as Siegfried and Eric left and to take out the remaining Danes. Yeah. He, he like and goes he to the other priest. Efferwich. Yeah. He goes to the other priest and he's like, I want blood or something. It's a battle yes. cry. And he's yeah. like, this character, this like, priest, Whoa. we don't know. We don't know who this priest is. We yeah, never met him. Sure. And, uh, but he gets the other priest riled up. He gets the town riled up. And when when the brothers leave for Scotland, like you just see them going like nuts on the rest of the Danes. Like they're yeah. the like they're being like Danes to the Danes, taking oh, yeah. back their city. It's, it's think, so yeah interesting. And I love how that they even mention how it was inspired by what Alfred was able to do. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. it's uh, it's so cool. It's sort of I think there's stories of like the American Revolution when we we're uh, able to overcome the British Empire. It kind of inspired other nations to do the same. Yeah, you know, like the French, the French, you know, other other places tried for revolution. Yeah. So that's kind of that kind of thing, which is pretty cool, pretty inspiring. So I think Meanwhile. at some point we're going to Winchester. We're we're in Winchester and we meet. Ethel Flood's older now. That's this is Alfred's daughter. Yeah. And it's pretty cool to see Alfred um, watching her his daughter like fight like as a training thing, uh, which I thought was pretty cool because he wants he wants her to be able to defend herself, you know, which yeah, is probably not what a lot of kings would do. Yeah. Um, it kind of makes you think though, like that's probably like how most dads like think of like the best thing they'd want for their daughter would like to be able to fight off someone you know yeah and he's he's got a training against another guy who becomes like a a, a main character stiappa yeah. stiappa his, yeah. his new man uh i think yeah. he replaces That's like the like, new Leofric. Leofric. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he doesn't have all the the sass and everything he's a big dude he's, he's just he's cool he's he is cool he's he's I real like loyal character. solid dude he's got good morals it seems yeah. you know um, he and the thing is like he's always loyal to Uhtred, but his loyalty to Alfred sort of always trumps his loyalty well, to Uhtred. Yeah, though. right. So he works for Alfred. He is loyal to Uhtred. He's a friend of Uhtred throughout. It seems, even though there's sometimes in the future uh, another spoiler here where Alfred and Uhtred might not be getting along, <laughs> and Stiappa kind of has to be against Uhtred, but Stiappa yeah. is still like not always mean to him you know what i mean he's yeah he respects like, him yeah respects you true he's just like ah it's my job i gotta you know he's like on the fringe of the bro group i'd, I'd say yes yeah, yeah he can't really officially be in the bro group because he's an out Al- Al- he's an alfred bro is what he is yeah. so. he's an alfred bro officially you know maybe in another another lifetime he could have been on the bros he would have made oh, a, yeah, a great official bro but yeah so that's i, I like that he was ethel flood was fighting so we have um Millie Brady is her name. Yeah, Millie Brady. Um, awesome actress, uh, very beautiful. Um, Alfred's yes. daughter, and yeah, so she's she's kind of established, and she's gonna become a uh, a very important character in this season. Yeah, she's not a big part of the, the first half here. No, but uh, no. she really becomes a big part in the second half, and then yeah, throughout season three too. Yes, but uh, meanwhile, while Alfred's you know watching her train, he gets he gets a letter. That an abbot, Abbot Idrid, had a, like a vision from uh, Saint Cuthbert, yeah. um, that a Dane slave called Guthred should become the new king of Cumberland. Uh, so yep. Alfred's like, well, it's from God, so it's got to yes. happen. You hear that's going to happen. It turns out he gets some silver, gets Bianca to go on this mission to find uh, Guthred. Uh, but before we get there. Our boy Uhtred, we get to see him. 
And how's he doing, Colby? How's Uhtred really well, right now? Um, Uhtred's been kind of living the, you know, uh, party life. You know, he's yeah. been going out. He's been drinking and whoring. And we kind of find, I think we find him in a bed. Mm-hmm. Being awoken with um, a bucket of water by yeah. Hild. Yep. And um, Hild has long hair now. Yeah, Hild has long hair. She's kind of pretty now. She's pretty now. Um, She's compared, definitely you know, pretty now. She looks a lot more calm than she was before. She doesn't have the this crazy short hair either. Right. Yeah. And she has obviously grown a huge loyalty to Uhtred. Mm-hmm. Um, and Uhtred, we also met Halig um, in season one. And he's also around with Uhtred. And now that's kind of, I think, the initial Uhtred crew here. The initial like yeah. bro group, even though yes, Hilda's a female. She's she's really a bro though. She's a bro. I mean, she's, oh no no no, she's, she's a bro. bro. There's no doubt about it. No doubt no doubt about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Uhtred's upset. Isolt is dead. Yeah, he was killed. But Hild is always there to remind Uhtred who he is. Yeah, reminds you are Uhtred of Bebenbur. So what do they decide to do? Start heading north. Um, isn't this is this is also the scene though where um, the the whore that was walking out with Uhtred's sword and silver, and Hild confronts her. Yeah. Um, and the the whore tries to hold Uhtred's sword up to her, and mm-hmm. Hild's like not phased at all, and not she's like, "You can keep the silver, but need the sword," because Hild mm-hmm. understands how important that sword is to Uhtred. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's that's serpent breath. That's his sword, man. Beautiful yeah. sword too. Yes. I, w- yes. I want it. I want it. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, very similar like to the scene. Up to her. <laughs> yeah. She's just like, you can kill me. I've killed before if you want to fight. Yeah. She's like, all right, fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. So very cool kind of seeing Hill do that and give the sword back and talk to Uhtred, kind of ins- re-inspire Uhtred to get moving, you know. Mm-hmm. And they head up toward Ephorwich. Yeah. So they come across Everwich and they're like, like, are Danes here? Because they're seeing like people hung up yes. and just yes, like yes. brutally killed and things like. And you're like, no, those are dead Danes. Dane, Danes don't do this to Danes. Right. And, like they'll fight, but they're not like raping and pillaging the Danes. Right, right, right. And they go into town. They they're quickly seeing that it's like the the Saxons the from that town that are yeah. the ones that you know. And taking back their city had like just become complete Danes, and then they're seeing. Uh, they eventually come across Haston, the one Dane who was left yeah. in charge of the town. He's like chained. He's got like chain on one of his arms, and he's got a sword, and he has to like. He has these people uh, that he has like he's trying to fight off with just like one hand. Yeah, uh, but he can't. Yeah, because they can't they're pulling on him with the chain, and and like know, people are pretty much just to, making... like go up and fight the Dane, fight the yes. Dane, you know. And uh, Uhtred doesn't doesn't really appreciate when he sees this, you know. Yeah, because so Uhtred's he, in the, you know, yeah. He's a good dude, solid dude. Good dude, either way. Um, and like he, we he, said, he's he's always feels like kind of a Dane, so like this this kind of gets to him, you know. And he yeah. so he goes up and he uh, then he he threatens the guy who has Haston tied up, you know. Uh, yeah. And so he lets him go, Haston. Haston leaves then. So he's kind of gained kind of an ally with the yeah. with that Dane there, you know. But then later though, they're they're in town and they meet Bianca again. Yes. Uh, oh, I love this moment. Great, great scene where they just uh just reunite and they just like hug like just I like think, a I think real solid hug. Bianca's back's turned when Uhtred walks in. And when Bianca hears Uhtred's voice, she's just like, oh, like <laughs> Like he's so happy, he's and he's yeah. just like, and they yeah, then they just like charge each other and just hug and oh man, very That's, cool, very cool. It's a small moment, and again, this is one of those things where they don't need to do this. Mm-mm. They don't they need to have. Easy, they could just said, oh hey Uhtred, hey, you know they could have they, they, they could even they could have had like a happy reunion, but it didn't have to be so heartfelt, you know. Yeah, it's awesome. Love yeah. that they take the time and the energy to do that kind of thing in this show. So exactly so. Good um, point. They, that yeah, honestly they, was probably one of my that's probably my bro moment from, that, from this episode uh, from the episode too is just okay you see, like you said like he just gets like so pumped 
He's like, yeah. oh my god, is that Ultra? Yeah. Like, I, I think I have a different one, but I think that's a good bro moment. Yeah. And it's it's a cool, yeah. Oh, it's Ultra. Yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. So yeah, so why is Bianca in town? So like like we said earlier, that Alfred got this letter about Guthred, mm -hmm. uh, the Dane slave who should be king of Cumberland. And uh, Bjork is there, and he's got the silver, and he's traveling to pay for the slave from the slaver uh, for Guthred, so they can make him king. And so Bjork is traveling with another priest and I think three lepers, people, three people yeah. with leprosy, uh, to like keep people away from them, essentially yeah. to be deterrents, because people had, um, you know, such a stigma of people with leprosy, you know, not wanting right. to to catch it or anything that they would stay away from them yeah. so they didn't yeah robbers aren't going to go and try to steal their stuff if there's lepers on board yeah. And, yeah. yeah so so that's that's why they have them with them and uh they ask utred to come with them and uh, yeah and utred you know he's kind of ah, eh, but then he hears a couple of things that make him think yes. about going one guthred who's a slave now when he becomes a king he'll probably be in Debted to Uhtred to do whatever Uhtred yes. wants. And Uhtred wants to fight Kjartan. He wants to get back Bevenber. So he really would like another king ally on his side that he could get an army from. Right. Um, they also find out, though, that the slavers are on Kjartan's land. So yes. it's, it's really got him thinking, hey, if I can get this guy free, he's going to resent Kjartan. Right. And he's going to really help me out building my army to go on Carton then. So he's like, right. I'll go with you guys. And like we said earlier, you know, Uhtred wants that. He's got that blood also, feud on Carton and Sven. Yeah. And he wants to get back. Carton also so. killed Guthred's father. Oh, he did. Yeah. So that's that's a double so reason. Uhtred, yeah. And so Uhtred heard that, too, and was like, it's like, oh, if I can get this guy on my side, yeah. you know, maybe I all can, you know, gain an ally that was in the future might help me fight Carton. So he definitely. Uhtred's always a good dude, but like here, it it shows you though, like how you were saying though before, like his main goal is Bevan Burr, it's Kjartan, you know, it's he's not so dumb. It's, it's really those are his motivations for for doing yeah. this, you know. So this seems like a great opportunity for him. We're approaching an awesome scene. We're approaching an awesome scene. Um, but the next thing we kind of find, they're traveling, right? Mm -hmm. They're heading there toward the. The slaver's place, and Uhtred is bathing, and Hild is bathing in the river, and uh, separately, although yes. Uhtred is trying to get that a little less separately, <laughs> and <laughs> and Hild's just having none of it, even though you kind of want them to, because Hild's awesome. Yeah, she's great. But, uh... And Uhtred finds this like pretty cool deer skull on the ground, and because he's a weirdo, he decides to, I guess he decides to keep it. Uh, <laughs> it is pretty cool, though. And he like goes up behind Hild while she's like, um, she's naked, and he puts it over his face, and just just joking with her. Again, another cool, awesome yeah. relationship building moment. And she kind of like brushes him off, you know. One th one thing that uh, I really like is just their relationship, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. he's he's always telling her, "You're you're too good of a woman for just God." Like God for God Himself. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but but anyway, yeah, that that deer skull, like you said, he he puts it like on his face, and he's like, he does something yeah. weird without it. Like it's it's some kooky Uhtred humor, you know. Great yeah, gift, by the way, when you're looking up Uhtred gifts, uh, him with a deer skull, great yes. gifts. Uh, they they get back then to traveling, and then Uhtred notices that there's some guys following them, and he mm -hmm. tells Bianca, "Hey, those are Kjartan's men, and yeah. they're probably gonna ambush us when we go up to the meeting." You know, they're probably just going to take your silver and just keep Guthred as a slave. So, like, oh, what do we do? And Uhtred comes up with this crazy plan. I mean, uh, I think we both crapped our pants when they uh, this happened. Because they don't tell us what it is at first. Yeah. Now, you 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 see Uhtred and them. Uh, he asks, you know, can the can the lepers ride horses? And like the other priest is like, what? Why are you asking me this? I'm like, what? Yeah. And we're like, and, and we're like, what? Yeah. We're like, what? So Bianca, the the other priest, and Hild. And Halleck, too. Halleck, they all show up. They meet the slavers. Uh, and it's it's nighttime. It's just lit by torches. They have all these slaves out. There's all these Dane slavers there. 
and Sven, actually. Sven Kjartansson, mm-hmm. of One-Eye Sven, the guy who, uh, you know, really wanted to capture Tora. And he's always just been a creepy dude and uh, sexually abusive towards Tora. He's there, too. They they meet Bjork and them, and they, they're asking them, you know, hey, we saw you had more guys with you. And Bjork is like, oh, yeah, well, they were... They're an evil yeah, lord. Don't you don't want to hear about them. like can, oh, yeah, just, that's right. Yeah, he's like he's like oh they were you know yeah oh praise praise God. Not, I think they're like they're not of this world. Yeah, and they're like they're making the, the the cross symbol on themselves anytime they talk about them. And they're like why why are you doing that? Why are you scared of them? Why are you making the sign of your god? And they're like they just they keep like like just teasing them with yes. you know the writers like oh you don't you don't want to know about that. Oh, <laughs> And it's like, like oh, that yeah, episode tell- of South Park. Um, <laughs> what what Canada? The one where like this um, oh, the Canada wall. builds a wall, <laughs> and and Mr. Garrison it kept keeps like talking about how he doesn't care about Canada and stuff until like they build this wall, and there's a Canadian sitting on top of the wall, and he's like, hey, what's over on the other side of that wall? Oh, well, we got some pretty cool stuff over here. I just can't tell you though. And he's like, I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty it's much that. Them. Yeah, it's pretty much that. <laughs> so they're like, and plus, so whereas like a, a normal God-fearing Christian would probably not believe any of this kind of like lore of like otherworldly things, right? These Danes are like, yeah, they, they believe that, you know, some kind of supernatural being come and, yeah. and see them, you know? So so for them, that kind of puts them on edge a little bit. I, I think we should mention, I think Hild was also kind of being... Uh, Hit on by one of the slave. Uh, oh, yeah, slave the, the main yeah. slaver guy was. Yeah. He like and Sven just like walk up to her and they're like, oh, we want her and like, yeah. take off your clothes. And she's like, I won't. I'm not gonna take off my clothes. But she's stone cold. She's had enough of that. I mean. Then all of a sudden, here come these riders, right, with torches. Right. They're these lepers. They look horrible. You know, mm-hmm. like they're just, you and know then, like, flashing faces by the, off. the firelight in the dark. Yeah. Here comes. Utrid. And he's got the deer skull that he found earlier, like as a mask on his face with a hood. He's so got he a looks big cloak like, on. And you yeah. can just, just see the deer skull in place of his face. And the fire, the way it's lit, he looks it it looks like pretty scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he talks like he deepens his voice when he talks. So cool. And so they're just kind of rounding, he's like circling them, and and all these Danes are like freaking out a little bit <laughs> so cool it's it was so cool i remember watching this uh, like just not expecting like any like anything like that to happen really cool scene just like how they do it like going by the lights and yeah, yeah. And just like utrid how he's talking and th- they freak out you know the slavers and everything and then yeah. he actually gets fed on the ground and he knocks uh, him out yeah well he almost kills him and yeah, Bjork actually to. tells him Bjork is like lord please don't you know we we got rid of them we we got what we came for it's all right and then he knocks him out and then a little bit later you see sven he's got a blindfold on both his eyes now and his hands tied behind his back he's walking through the woods yeah walking through the the woods then he hears like a howl and he just starts running and hits a tree (laughs) (laughs) that was like my that the the fire scene and then sven just like uh, crapping his pants and then running into that tree was like my my favorite moments from uh, the episode. Oh, absolutely. That's that's a an iconic moment in season two. I think when Uhtred rolls up with the mask. Yeah. Uh, just like who thinks of that? Uhtred, man. Uhtred. That's man. a crazy plan. You yeah. know, it's like so out of the box. You know. Mm-hmm. Uhtred's out of the box. Uhtred's not in that box. They find Guthred. He sure enough, he's in the slaves. They take him like, oh, guess what? You get to be king because of a, a dream. Um, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> and Uhtred is, is talking to, to Guthred. And yeah. Guthred's very appreciative that Uhtred came and freed him. Because, I mean, he, he wouldn't have been freed if not for Uhtred. Guthred 100% recognizes what Uhtred did. Mm-hmm. You know, no doubt. Yeah. He and he asks him too, like, I want you to serve me. And Utred's like yes. gives him like the side eye, like, I I don't serve anyone. But he's like, I want you to be my commander. And Utred's yeah. like, Oh, okay. Okay. He's like, Give me an army and then intention to build an army. 
Yeah. He's like, yeah. And he's like, Heck yeah. you want to fight Kjartan? And he's like, sure, bud. Sure. Like, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, so Uhtred's in a pretty good spot right now. Now he's got the means to raise an army. Yeah. You know, so this has worked out for Uhtred better than he could have ever expected. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems really good, um, too, right now. Yeah. It, you're like, here's here's a guy who's going to be a king who's already appreciating Uhtred, who's already an yeah. Uhtred fan. You yeah, know. so you're pretty, Alfred's, you're like, oh, yeah. Alfred's like, if and then, kind of Uhtred fan, you know? Yeah, yeah. A mass of Manos, you the know? Thing is, Alfred's too smart. <laughs> Alfred is too smart. He's, he, Guthred's no Alfred, though. Guthred is no Alfred. Is, we, He's we no come Alfred. To no. He's kind of, you kind of get to the thing about Guthred where he seems like he's got a really good heart right away. But he also yeah. kind of seems a little bit spineless a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think it's a vibe he gives off. He's he's young. He's um, he was definitely, a slave, though. He was a slave, was a slave for, yeah. a long, or for a while. And, he's not a know. warrior type. No. But he seems like a good dude. So they're rolling in. And this was probably my bro moment of this episode. <laughs> So they have uh, Father um, Abbot Edred, right? Yeah. The guy who had the dream. He says he had the dream. They show him, and they're like, oh, he's arriving. So they go outside, and it shows Uhtred, who looks like this great warrior. He looks very kingly, you know. And he um, looks and like then, a Dane, too. And, and he they, looks like a Dane. Where They knew that you know, the guy couldn't really in tell. Dane. You couldn't really tell with Guthrid if he was. He looked like a Dane. He's just kind of the skinny. And every all the the townspeople think that uh, Uhtred is Guthrid. And so they start, like, saying he's king and, like, cheering for him. Yeah. And, and Guthrid uh, lets it happen, too. And, well, Guthrid thinks it's funny. And, like, he's like, well, let's you, let you do this. It's like a, a cool. That's my bro moment. I thought that was awesome. Like, yeah. Like instead of being like you're not king, he's just like, "Hey, this is funny. Let's uh, let the people think that you're king for a second. Well, uh, so I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, and Uhtred's Even just saying get to all the... sorts of funny stuff. He's like, "Yeah, yeah." Uhtred just waving. <laughs> he's like, "I would be a good king." And oh, and, and Bianca is like, "This is blasphemy, Uhtred. This is almost blasphemy." Yeah. And Uhtred just keeps like saying stuff. And it's funny. It's funny. Oh, no, it's like it's like Bianca's like your parent and like. You're the kid who's just, even though your parents tell you to stop, you're just, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Things. So anyway, they they show up where Father, or Abbot Idrid is, and everyone's cheering for Uhtred, and, and Guthred has, has his hood up, and Father, or Abbot Idrid is like, it's just like I saw in my dream. It just looks so perfect. And Uhtred's just like smiling, because, <laughs> first of all, Uhtred knows that it's just BS. And which was just like, oh, are you sure you didn't see him in your dream? Because, you know, I'm not actually Guthrid. <laughs> and Guthrid whips the, the hood off. And Idrid's just like, uh, <laughs> bruh. He was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I meant you. I'm, I'm mistaken, you know. Oh, I'm mistaken, yeah. Forgive me. Oh, um, I, I didn't eat enough breakfast this morning. <laughs> it, is, it is you, yeah. <laughs> so he tries to cover up. And so now we're back. That was a cool moment. It was. I I really liked that moment. Just and it, again too. It's just there's Guthred just making it seem like Uhtred, You know, him and him are gonna be a great uh, relationship. Yeah. You you do see too um, when they're they're riding up to the church. Abbot Idrid there, the guy who had the the vision, standing next to him is uh, Guthred's sister Gisela. Yes. Very pretty lady. Very very uh, very pretty. Played by what's Perry Perry Baumeister. Perry Baumeister is Gisela. She's a very pretty lady. Pretty lady. She is very, very and pretty. You can just tell, you know, Uhtred like kind of looks at her and you're like, Uhtred already loves that chick. Uhtred's <laughs> instantly in love. Instantly, instantly in love. Like, duh. <laughs> the yeah. abbot's like, we're going to make you king right now. We're going to make you king right now, bro. All you got to do is, is kiss this dead corpse <laughs> that's it <laughs> king it's saint cuthbert though saint cuthbert who right. he you know he claims he had the vision through and every i was in in the book too they actually they mentioned how saint cuthbert is like someone that they uh, they really admire like most of the, yeah. the christians really admire this saint cuthbert when they get off there and uh Bialka is like he hears St. Cuthbert's bones are like, he's like, St. Cuthbert's bones are in here? 
<laughs> oh my! Can I see them? And he's like, yeah, sure, they're right in here. He was like, oh my goodness! <laughs> but they they go in there to to swear, like you said. All you got to do is is kiss the corpse there. I don't know. Did they kiss it? I can't remember. He has to hold its hand. I don't remember. He holds. He yeah, he holds the he hand. Holds the hand. Yeah, and Utre is just so. standing because he's like, I don't I don't give a shit about these bones. <laughs> And like you can just tell the abbot's real ticked off that Uhtred's even like associated with the guy he wants to be king. He's not being disrespectful, but he's not being as like as submissive as everyone else as they expect everyone else to be. Yeah. He's just like like I, this isn't anything to me. You know what am I? Right, he's just right, standing right. there. Everyone's like on their knees at the ceremony. Bjork is like and Guthred's like, Come come on, buddy, come over here as I swear in to be king. Yeah. So again you're like Guthrie's a pretty cool Guthrie's dude. A cool dude. So that's so, really yeah. the, the end of the Uhtred part. But uh, meanwhile, but yeah, but we also see Sven arrive back at Dunholm where Kjartan is. Yeah, Kjartan is pissed about mm-hmm. what happened to Sven. So Kjartan like does not buy any of this ghost stuff. Um, no, Sven, he does. Sven totally believes like yeah. that it happened. And his Sven, men with him are like, oh, we saw it, Lord, we saw it. Yeah, and he's just like, no, that was Uhtred. You idiots. Because <laughs> Kjartan is, he's a bad dude, but he's a smart dude. He orders a couple of his top men so to go and infiltrate Uhtred, who's building this army, and then kill Uhtred. And he also is like, oh, and go shut up the dogs. They're barking. And you're like, what? Dogs? Mm. And they walk downstairs, and Tura is there in a cage. 300 dogs around her. She's a dog lady it, now. <laughs> she's probably got like at least a dozen dogs in her cage. They're all like huskies and German Shepherd like mixes and things like that. Mutts and stuff. Yeah, like and, wolf looking dogs. Yeah, but they as soon as Sven walks in, they all start just growling at him. And you can tell they're they're super loyal to Tira, right? Mm-hmm. Sven's actually not super mean to her here. He's like he's, he's kind like, of scared. Actually, he's scared and he actually kind of like wants. He's like, would you stop like acting like this? Like, I can give you a good life if you just, you know what I mean? He's like, yeah, if you, you don't have to live down here. He says, you don't have like, to live down here. Yeah, and she's just not having any of it. It's it's pretty clear. Tura's just had like a just terrible freaking life. Terrible life. She you looks. Know, since she looks she, horrible. She has her eyebrows shaved off now. And like she just looks very scary. pale. Yeah, pale, oh, skinny, super super skinny. Mm. So that's kind of where we we end it. But you're right, Kjartan just kind of knows. He's just like, that was Uhtred. <laughs> but imagine if Sven didn't exist. Kjartan probably always would have been like loyal to Ragnar the Fearless. Yeah, that's a that good That was like point. one of Ragnar the Fearless's guy. It was his boat. I don't know if he built the boat, but he like... Yeah, it was his boat was builder boat in the books. That was his... His, his Loki yeah. was Kjartan. The Floki of the books, right? Or Floki, not Loki. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, he probably would have been loyal to Ragnar forever. Yeah, but then he was just jaded forever because Ragnar banished him from the land. And blind, and he, half blinded, and blinded his, son. his son, you know. It took out one of his, only one of his eyes, though. But I guess we could say that, you know, maybe his bad parenting maybe led to some of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd, you'd think something would have happened there. Garen's a bad dude. Garen's a bad dude. I mean, he eventually does have one... You know, of Ragnar's daughters captured forever as a, you know, to rape, you know, essentially. So he's he's a bad dude. Yeah. Did you say what your favorite moment from that? Mine was the. Oh, definitely the, the skull. Okay. Definitely All right, him yeah. coming in. I mean, there's no doubt. Pretty solid episode though. Pretty solid episode yeah. for the first season there. So we'll jump right into episode two. Keep it episode going. Episode two. So, <clears throat> Guthrid's forming his army, um, so they can go to Epperwich. They, they, there's a scene where like they're all gathered around and Uhtred's like training people how to fight. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and we see these Kjartan's Danes roll up. Yeah. Because they in the last episode they showed us what they look like. They're just they're just cool. They're like we want to join the army. You know we heard about your army that you're raising and we just had to join. And so Guthrid is like great. This is awesome. We got like a few good men here. And Uhtred's mm-hmm. kind of like. Uhtred's got a gut feeling here. He's like, huh, where do you guys come from? <laughs> and they, they make up some name. Yeah, he's like, who is, who is your the master you served? And they just yeah. say someone. Yeah. 
And U- Uhtred's always, he's kind of very skeptical of these guys in general. And he's like, all right, well, I guess you guys can stay and eventually. Because Guthrid kind of says to him, he's like, look, these are like men who want to join our army. Like, how could we refuse them? And I think some at some point in the sequence, we see Klappa. Yeah, so like I don't remember, said, I don't... they're all gathered in a circle. And Uhtred yeah. is like actually fighting with Klappa. Who's uh, this, this big dude? Just huge arms, bald head, big like white handlebar mustache uh i mean he looks like he could be like a pro wrestler or (laughs) or like a bear wrestler or a bear wrestler probably more accurate and he's he's actually a dane too actually yeah um and utred's training with he's just like hammering away on utred but utred's making all of his quick moves Showing off to the crowd (laughs) and he and and utred like gets him onto onto his knees and utred's got like his sword up to his throat and then he just, like, kisses his head. Because <laughs> class is totally bald. Gisela's watching, and she's, you can just tell she's interested in uh, Uhtred, you know. She's interested in his personality and everything. And, yes. And he's he's probably in part showing off for her as well. Oh, Bjork 100. even says, like, he's being a peacock right now. He's trying to fluff his feathers out. Yep. And, and Hild was like, it's probably working, though, right? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Bjork is like, even his scars are sexy. Yes, yeah. <laughs> One guy we meet too with uh this group of Danes that is infiltrating right now, Citric is actually part right, of Right, well we don't yeah. We're not we sure. don't know who this is yet. It doesn't mean anything when we see him. He doesn't mean anything yeah. to us. Yeah, but this in is fact, I, remember, I didn't even notice him the first time we watched. He was just kind of one of those guys in the background. Clappa kind of becomes a friend of Utrid. He kind of has become it's not really a defining moment when he becomes part of the group, but he's all of a sudden he's part of Uhtred's group, and he becomes mm-hmm. a cool character. Yeah. Um, Uhtred continues to hit on Gisela. Gisela does not like how Guthrid um, is like acting like her father instead of brother. Yeah, he's he's really getting like you know whispers in his ears from that Abbot Edred. It's pretty clear that Abbot Edred's kind of. Uh, using him, this guy, to be like his vessel as a king, you know, to yeah. get whatever his interests are that he wants done. He doesn't really like Uhtred. And he's he kind of starts whispering things to to uh, Guthred, like yeah. you know, Uhtred, Uhtred, you know, the men like him too much, and he yeah, likes and your it's... sister too much, you know, like yes, you yes, you yes, shouldn't yes. like this guy. And Guthred's actually kind of annoyed too that. Uh, that like Uhtred's hitting on his sister and he is kind of, you can tell he is kind of insecure about yeah. Uhtred's position there. So like they, they have like a talk and there's just like a little bit of like tension in the between them. But it them. grows. It grows. Like the first couple times that happens, I feel like Uhtred's kind of like, that's Uhtred, you know, don't, you know. Yeah. You know, he's my bro. And then it, 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 like Uhtred keeps hammering away, whispering things in his ear and, and it really you know, grows throughout the, the episode. Yeah, it really grows, and then you kind of see Guthrid slowly kind of falling to Idrid's side, Idrid's yeah. point of view, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, and then Uhtred and, and Guthrid might have a cool conversation together, and it'll seem like everything's okay. But uh, inside, Guthrid inside is is really torn. Yeah, oh. He's he's really insecure about about. Yeah, that. yeah. And Uhtred's just this beacon of confidence and friendship with everyone you know and, and everyone notices it too everyone right. notices and it. and to guthrid like abbot Ab- edred's trying to tell guthrid that's a threat to you you know mm-hmm. so guthrid's definitely starting to, to grow a little bit of beef with utrid a little tension uh in the air yeah. um so anyway we're moving through the episode and they're all kind of hanging out and somebody comes up to utrid and says we need you uh, someone needs to talk to you in the stables or something. What was it? Yeah, he says your horse is sick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Uhtred goes by himself because Uhtred's horse is like a bro too. You know. Oh, oh Uhtred's <laughs> horse is totally. And he's um, like, I've got to check on yeah. my horse. Right. Oh, and they they also show Uhtred like throughout the show they show Uhtred taking care of his horse. He he. he he's just a good all around dude. Stroking yeah. his face. Uhtred heads over there and Uhtred gets ambushed by Kiatan's men. Yeah, those Danes that, you know, yeah. infiltrated into, like, the army there. But what Kjotun's men did not understand was that Uhtred had bros, you know? And I think it's Halig who kind of just, like, looks. He's like, like, he's looking, 
when notices Danes, something's weird. Yeah, when did the Danes over that table leave? Because he's been he was skeptical of those Danes too. When they yeah, came. he was. Oh, because yeah, when they showed up, he went over and tried to make friends with them and talk to him and they just were total dicks to him yeah yeah he um is like come on let's go check on utrid and clappa and him does hild go too yeah hild goes too and they go and sure enough utrid um is being held back because utrid tried to fight and he tried to get away but he just was surrounded there were just too many of the, the other guys and they He's grabbed like his trapped arms in the stables you know yeah. not a lot of room to oh, go anyway and kiatan had told his men don't kill him, but go ahead. If you want to take one of his eyes, you can take out one of his eyes. That's what this guy's about to do. He's like, oh, which one should I take? He says, which yeah. one do you want to keep? Utrid's like, yeah, because he's nice. Blue one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here comes Klappa and Hallig and, and Hild to the rescue. And they fight. It's a pretty cool fight scene. And they win. How we yeah, said Citric, Citric the one day. He's left there. And yeah. Utrid's like, don't kill him. We need one alive. And then he looks at yeah. the guy who was going to cut out his eye and he's like, but not you. <laughs> and he yeah. Kills, and he kills him. And Uhtred needed their heads off for um, a future engagement that oh, he was yeah. involved in. He orders Halleg to do it. And Halleg's like, I mean, Halleg's like a, a good dude. I mean, he's, he's not so much a warrior kind of type. You know, he's kind of that nice guy. Yeah. And he fights. He was at the battle, Ethington, but he's, yeah, he's no, not he like fights, he doesn't have that brave. Dane like cunning sort of like like bloodless. You no. know, he's just kind of a no. dude. And here comes another kind of crazy moment. Yeah. Hild, the nun, the nun, Hild shows up, and she's like, um, what's it like? You know, uh, you're gonna cut their heads off and stuff. And he's like, yeah, I'm getting to that. And she's like, hmm. You know, I wonder what it feels like. Uh, you mind if I just... Uh... <laughs> and they're like, uh, I don't think you'd like that. <laughs> and so she's go, she walks over and she grabs like a, like a little knife. And he's like, yeah. no, you, you use like an axe. <laughs> and she's like, she's like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and it just shows her with her knife chopping just off the main Dane guy's head. Yeah, there. sawing it off. And she's just blood and she's... Clapping Halleck just like, Ugh. oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And she just needed to, um, I think she said something like she needs to get used to the feeling because she, you know, she's expressed that she wanted to to be able to defend herself to Utrecht. Yes. Because yeah. um, if you remember, we, we said in uh, our recap season one that she was like raped by Danes is really like what yeah. made her meet Utrecht. She was, you know. Um, so I, I think she still sort of has like that resentment towards uh, some Danes, you know, still thinking about that and think, you know, that obviously traumatized her. And, right. And, you know, even though she's strong, it, it seems like when she's cutting off this head that this is kind of like when she's like the back evolution. in the stable when she was like stabbing the guy, you know, a hundred times. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of feels like it's that is like what's provoking her. Yeah. Like There's here. also a moment where she like takes she like puts on chain mail. Yeah, she puts on too, and she like changes what she wears, so she's kind of becoming this warrior almost. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Um you know, so a pretty cool evolution for her. Uh and um that was kind of a crazy moment. We were kind of like looking at each other when that happened, like, whoa. <laughs> like it was weird. It was weird. It was weird. Well, the army then they're they're all getting together then the next morning. Uh, sure. Their yes. their plan is to start marching towards Efferwich. Uh, they want to take that city back, or mm-hmm. well, they, they don't need to take it back because the the Saxons have already taken it back from the Danes. But they want to like start establishing some more uh, kingdom, and I think that's really their right. main setup then, um, yep. or they want it to be. Uh, but before they leave, uh, Bianca like has a real like touching moment with Uhtred yeah. uh, before he, cause he's going to head back to see Alfred. And like, this is again, my bro moment from this episode is Bianca, yeah. Bianca and Uhtred talking and Bianca's telling him like, you've got a good heart, you know, you're the best. And like, just in a great, like emotional, like dialogue there between them. They hug yeah, again. Bianca leaves. I mean, that's great. Great scene, man. That was a great moment. 
yeah. the last episode of season one, how Bianca like yes. like immediately starts like becoming a bro. Like before that, yeah. he was like kind of annoying. Right from then on, he's like bro, a hundred percent. Bro, like all the time. It was so it was just a great moment with them. Again, you know, here are my two moments, my best bro moments in a row are Bianca moments, but I th- I think it's just great. I mean. Yeah. He gives some like cautionary words to Uhtred, and but he tells him, you know, how he loves him and stuff, and they give a hug. Great, yeah. just a great scene between you know priests, who Uhtred generally doesn't like priests, and Uhtred, this Dane pagan, you know, great relationship. I mean, it's it's really cool. Yes, it, it's awesome. It kind of shows too. Uhtred like he doesn't judge people based on if they're Saxon or Dane. He doesn't judge them. Nope. He gets to know that, you know, like he knows Bianca as a man, not as a priest, you know. Yeah, he judges them on their actions only. On That's... their actions and who they are, you know. Yeah. Something that is not very common at the time period. Other people, mm-hmm. like on you're on one side of the aisle, if you're a Dane, you know, you're you're evil, heathen automatically. Mm-hmm. Or if you're a Saxon, you're, you know. A pious. Pious everybody, yeah. you know. And then Uhtred's, you know, Uhtred kind of gains. And Uhtred's crew is made up of people who are. Like him, I would say, not yeah. as cool as him, but like, I mean, he kind of—I think he kind of converts Bianca that way. Mm-hmm. I don't think Bianca was that way all the time, but he, and, and we can't really talk about it yet. We'll probably talk about it at the end of the episode today, of you know how much he did convert Bianca to that way of thinking. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it's that's really where his power comes from—is just. Yeah. Being, being able to relate to everyone so everyone is able to be friends with him you know yes. or respect him to some degree and um there's another so there's some in-between scenes alfred um is trying to make plans for ethel flood to be married mm-hmm. and of course to them it's about you know who's the best su- suited based on who can give us the most like power and land you know yeah they're trying to form the alliances through to marriage form alliances yeah. um Ethel Fled's kind of excited about this too. She hears she is, like, yeah. that she's gonna get married. She's like, I'm to be married. Yeah. And it's pretty her, traditional back then, right? So Yeah. So yeah, so that's all we kind of know at that point. Yeah. Flashback. Alfred's not a big part of this this half of the 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 season. season. No. Yeah. They they cut in every now and then showing them. And for the most part this time, Uhtred and Alfred are um pretty good with each other. Yeah, they're they're pretty solid. Yeah. Like you like you said, uh in the last one, Alfred tells Uhtred after the Battle of Ethington that Wessex owes him a debt, you know. Yes. So then we're back at, like, they, they made camp on their journey to um, to Efferwich, right? Yeah. And Citrix, like, you know, I need to go take a shit. <laughs> yep. And Halleck's like, too bad. <laughs> He's like, and Citrix's like, come on! <laughs> And I think Hild tells him to go or something. Or... Yeah. No, Hild walked by. He asked Hild first, and she walked by. And I think Hild told Hallie to, to go take care of that or something. And they go out there, and he's like, well, I need you to untie turn my around. hands. Or... What's that? Oh, turn I think around. he has him turn around. Yeah. His hands are still tied. That's right. That's right. There's two guys that come out to, do, to, uh, to guard Citric, and he beats up the one guy takes yeah. his sword and then he fights Halig, disarms him and uh puts a sword to his throat and he's like I want to speak to Utrid. Yep. I want to work I want to work for Utrid. I don't want to yeah. kill you. Utrid comes so, out and yeah, he's just like, "Look, man, like you know, I know this looks bad, but I want to I want to be on your side. I want to work for you." And Utrid's just like, "Why the heck would I do that? Like you've got to, you know, you you're Kiatan's dude." You tried to kill me. You're part of the crew that tried to kill me. Now you've got Halig, like one of my bros. Yeah. You know, you got to sort up to my bro's neck. Cedric then reveals to Uhtred, like, Lord, I'm his bastard son. You know, like, I never wanted to follow him. Uh, I can't follow him. And meanwhile, and... this whole time, uh, Abbot Idred is just screaming, kill him, kill him, kill him now, kill the pagan. And Uhtred's like, shut up. No yeah. one will speak but me. Yeah. And, and like, Idrid like really takes offense to that. Oh yeah. I mean, like oh, here's yeah. this pagan telling him what to do. But I mean like too, it's it's because it's real annoying because like he he's obviously showing that he has no dis he completely has no regard for Halig's life because Halig has a sword to his throat. 
you know, and if they just, you know, yeah. run at Citric, he's probably going to kill Halleck. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, Uhtred's, like, trying to negotiate the situation calmly here. Calmly, you know. Right. So he takes charge. Like, yeah. and it's clear he's the one in charge of this situation. Oh, yeah. Not Guthrid, not the abbot. Like, yeah. Uhtred is the, the, the commanding voice out of all of them. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt. And, I mean, there's a reason Citric asked for Uhtred, you know, not Guthrid, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He could, he could see that, you know? So that, that's another good point to ask for Uhtred and not Guthrid. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Uhtred hears him out. And he pretty much is like, I think he tells him, like, you know, I'll kill you if you do anything. He actually lets Citric, Citric join, which Halleck's yeah. not super happy about. <laughs> but uh, And he, he sees it as, you know, one, I've got another guy on my side. Two, this guy knows Carton's yes. uh, fort. So, like, he's he's a good asset to have. Yeah. So he, he, he does actually, you know, join the army. Um, after this happens, though, uh, you know, Idrid, again, Abbot Idrid, he sits down, and he's whispering in Guthrid's ear, like, he thinks he's the king. He acts yeah. like he's the king, mm-hmm. you know, and you can tell and Guthrid's Uthred, getting more and more. Mm-hmm. He, he looks anxious mm-hmm. here. He's even like kind of like, like, like in his head, he's like, but Uhtred freed me, you know, yeah. And, yeah. but he's, you can tell he's still anxious. And yes. Gisla, is, I think Gisla's there too, and she actually stands up for Uhtred too. Yeah, she does. Uh, saying like we, he wouldn't be king if not for Uhtred. You know, yeah. he's not trying to be king. Gisla and Uhtred, um, you know, they shag. Yes. Oh, they shag that night. And this is another kind of funny part where there's a priest around who's like looking into it. You know, yeah. she was told to keep tabs on Uhtred, and he realizes what's going on. Mm-hmm. So he's listening in on the tent, and Hild comes out. Can I help you with something? <laughs> and Hild knows what's going on. Yeah. So here's a nice bro moment. <laughs> yeah, good bro moment there too. She's like, Do, "Can I yeah. help you with something?" And he's like, "Uh, not, no." <laughs> he goes hey. back to the abbot then, that priest, and the yeah, abbot's like, this. "I already, you know, I've made plans to have Elfric." be our ally if yeah. we give him Gu- uh give him good three if we He's give still... him utred oh utrid yeah right 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 right. and if you don't remember elfric that's right 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 right, right, right. uncle at bevenberg yeah. and utred you know utred has been saying throughout the show that he's the rightful elderman of bevenberg by right by birthright but uh, Elfric has taken over and, you know, he even tried to send an assassin after Uhtred when he was, you know, younger in season one. Uh, so he does not want Uhtred, you know, out there in the world making these claims because then he'll lose his power. The abbot hears, you know, Abbot Idred, he sees this as an opportunity to gain men from Bevenberg yeah. uh, and also get rid of Uhtred. So he's like, I wrote a letter saying, you know, we'll give him Uhtred and he'll give us men. Yep. Um, he hasn't told Guthred this yet, though. No, he has not. Uh, he's he's making these unilateral decisions right now. But anyway, they're back on the road, though, then. The army's moving. They come across uh, Siegfried and Eric's yes. army. They're back from Scotland. Uh, we hear in their fort that they lost to the Scots. They're back. So they're pre- And they lost in Scotland, right? Yeah, so yeah. they're defeated right now. And mm-hmm. I think Siegfried's pretty upset and it's Eric who's like telling him like we'll get we'll get back. We're going to mm-hmm. we're going to get back to our plan. Like don't even sweat it, bro. Yeah. Like like chill, bro. Don't even sweat <laughs> it, man. Pretty don't sure sweat. that's exactly what he said. <laughs> and they have a meeting. Word for word. Yeah. And Uhtred um he wants to attack them and just wipe them out. You yeah, know? they they lead like a scouting party through the woods and they see them and he's like Uhtred's like, they're weak. We need to fight them now. We need to kill them now while they're weak. Yeah. And you can tell Guthred, he's been, you know, he's been hearing things from the priests throughout the episode. And he's just like, his faith in Uhtred. Yeah. And he kind of, he almost is going to start making decisions at this point, just in spite of Uhtred anyway. Yeah. He wants even to, if Uhtred's right, even if he knows Uhtred's right, he's trying yeah. to prove that he's the king and not Uhtred. Exactly. So he's like, I, I don't think we should. I think we should meet with them. Yeah. And Uhtred's like, this is dumb. And yeah. like, 
Yeah. But anyway, they, they meet then, and he even tells Uhtred, I'm the only one who should speak. And Uhtred's, and... like, immediately goes up. <laughs> yeah, as soon as they're in the meeting. Yeah. He's, he's like, saying things to Siegfried and Eric. They ended up making uh, an alliance, actually. They say yes. to to take Kjartan's land to, yes. to fight Dunholm. But Uhtred, he doesn't like it. Again, he mm-hmm. keeps speaking out during the meeting. Pretty clear that the the abbot Idred then has more, you know, to level on t- to Gufred yeah, yeah, yeah. about Uhtred. Like, look, he's trying to be king again. To, yeah. Again, just more more insecurities then for Guthred there. Yes. We, then we find out that Aelfrich, um, Uhtred's uncle, he agrees to be part of this alliance to attack Kjartan mm-hmm. for one thing, Osbert's head. Now, who is Osbert, you might be wondering? If you don't remember, that was Uhtred, our Uhtred's name before uh, his older brother Uhtred had died. Yeah. And then his father had changed Osbert's name to Uhtred and rebaptized him. So there wasn't any confusion at heaven, Heaven's Gates. Yeah, paperwork. Yeah, right, right. He says, for his head, I will join your alliance and we can... Um, 200 take, men, I think he says. Spears, I think, yeah. Yeah, 200 spears, yeah. Uhtred goes out to check out the fortress, Kjotun's fortress, and he does another awesome thing. Yeah, so, so all those so they heads, all wake, they, yeah. they cut off. They have... He, he went out in the night you know, he did a little crafting at nighttime, and he he, he has crafts. all these spears lined up on the road to Dunholm, to the fortress of Kjartan, and he has all the heads of the men that were sent yeah. to kill him, yeah. like on on spears on the road. Yes. And who rides up? The ghost again. The ghost. So actually, what happens is, um, before before the ghost rides up, uh, Kjartan sends one of his dudes out to check out the heads like who are they who are these men yeah and he's like they like everybody else is inside the fortress and this guy's out on the road that leads to the fortress looking at all the heads saying who they are and he he asked if i don't remember his name the his main guy's name he's like is is he there and like the last one on the end was him Mm -hmm. and then there i think there was one that was not that didn't have a head on it or something yeah because citric wasn't wasn't there He's like, I only right. see like, six, and we sent seven. Where's where's right. the other one? And that's when Uhtred rides up with the mask on, with the deer skull mask on again. Mm-hmm. And he cuts off that guy's head. <laughs> <laughs> just instantly. Yeah. And that guy just got up for work that day. I mean, that guy... <laughs> like, early, he just had his coffee, went out the door. Coffee. Like, see better you, check on these heads. Money. Yeah. <laughs> and so then... Uhtred does a cool speech again to Kjotun, you know. Kjotun just yells out, I know it's you, Uhtred Ragnarsson, or something like that. You know, he... Yeah, doesn't buy any you know, of it. Yeah, and Uhtred just kind of keeps going with it and then rides away. Really uh, cool scene. I was not expecting uh, Deer Skull Uhtred to be back. I'm really yeah. glad he did. He yeah. showed up again. Because Uhtred's got to do it in style, you know. He can't yeah. just... Um, I think... Can we say this is the last time, at least as of season three, that he is Deer Skull Uhtred? Yes. Yeah. And it's I really hope he comes back though, because yes. anytime Deer Skull Uhtred comes around and is making menacing things, it's always a good time. It is a it's great always time. A good time. Uhtred rides back then to Guthred's army. It's nighttime. He comes back into the the main place or. I think they actually, they did take Ephrawich, yeah. Yes. So they took Ephrawich. I think it was an Ephrawich. Yeah, there, there are an Ephrawich at this point, and I remember, like, the abbot Edred when they, they took Ephrawich. Look, Lord, you you took Ephrawich without a drop of blood because we had St. Cuthbert's bones in front of us. No, dude, it's because those guys, I, like, all the townspeople revolted, like, long before you were even king. Like, uh-huh. So they're at Ephrawich. Uhtred rides back to, to Ephrawich then with at night, and he goes into the hall where Guthred's sitting. And uh, Guthred's like, "Oh, where were you, dude?" And Uhtred's like, "Just needed some air." Uhtred asks him. He's like, "You know, I want to be seen as an equal." And Guthred 
is kind of like looking at him like, what? And he's like, I want to be seen like Siegfried and Eric, uh, Eric because like yeah. I'm in Uhtred, you know, still in his head is an elder man. He's like, I'm an elder man. I have men, you know, I want to be seen as a rival. <clears throat> Guthred's like, I see you as a rival. And he's like, yeah, make peace with me. And in Uhtred, this is just like a sign of respect. That's all he yes. wants. Is he just wants some verbalized respect? Because he never got that from, he. I mean, he's gotten it from time to time from Alfred, but he's never got that like you're my equal thing. Yeah. That's all he wants to hear. He doesn't want to hear I'm a king. He doesn't want to hear I need to get this from you. Yeah. Um. I think he does ask for, uh, Gisela. He does. Uh, and so yeah. I mean, but from Uhtred's side, Uhtred's yeah. like this is just a playful talk, but I'm all trying good. to get respect. Yeah. Uh, he hears that he's an arrival, and Uhtred's like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank he's like you. smiling. Yeah, he's happy. Where and, Guthrid, but... and Guthrid's head is like, this is over the line. Now I got to do something. Yeah, and, and he even agrees that, uh, well, he says to Uhtred that he can have his sister, right? He's like, well, is the f- feeling mutual? And he's like, it is, Lord. It is. He's like, all right. And he's like, I see you as, an, as a rival. And uh, and like yeah. the way he says, it, you can just tell on his end that this is like he's just real insecure right now. You know, he's he's definitely been listening more to the Abbot Idrid about this. Yes. Um, so, Guthred, I'm mean, not Guthred. Uhtred and Halig, they're asleep in their hut, and Hild is walking one morning. She sees Abbot Idrid and a bunch of dudes uh, running into Uhtred's house. Yeah. Um, and they go in there. They they take out Uhtred and Halig while they're asleep, beat them up, take them out. Yeah. And Hild sees this and she even like grabs Uhtred's sword and like, what do you want me to do? And Uhtred's like, don't do anything. Just leave. Just leave. And then they they take him up to like the main hall and Guthred's standing there. And turns out he actually listened to the, to the abbot and he's well, going to. He's making an alliance with Elfric. Sort, uh, sort of. Sort of. Right. Um, but instead of killing Uhtred, he decides to sell him into slavery. And yes. he even acknowledges. He's like, I acknowledge that, you know, it's pretty ironic that you gave me my freedom from slavery and now I'm and selling I'm you yours. Yeah. I'm taking yours. Yeah. taking yours. It's like such a shitty moment right there. I mean... Oh like, man! Can you imagine someone like freeing you from hell and then you betray them? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like such a shame. Oh man, so bad. From Guthrid's point of view, he's thinking, "All right, like I know I can't kill Uhtred for what he did to me, you mm-hmm. know." So Guthrid, in his mind, this is merciful because he needs those men from El- um, Elfrich for their goal. Mm-hmm. But um, he does also doesn't want to kill Uhtred, right? Yeah. So he thinks saving, sending him to slavery is the best option. Um, and then Hild, after this, goes straight to Wessex, where she tells Alfred what happened. It's actually, Alfred at first is like, well, why should I go after and stuff? And, you know, eventually, I, yeah, he's convinced, though, I mean... He's like, why should I send my men to go do this? And then Oda, who uh, Lord Oda, has become a cool character who likes Uhtred, who has re- Uhtred's respect, mm-hmm. is like, well, why not send Ragnar? Ragnar would probably have a better idea of how to find him, and you know, Bjorka actually offers two to go before Oda yes, makes Bia- that yes. suggestion. Another yeah, Bia- great like, promo from. Yeah, from but, Bia- but Oda's like, Ragnar is more capable. He likes yeah, Uhtred, and can't he still be our hostage as he's looking for Uhtred? And yeah. so they're like, all right, let's use him. But uh, the next Which, thing we as see... as a fan is, of the show, is just like, yes! Like, let's let's go Ragnar. Like, because yes. Ragnar is a cool character. Very cool. To be able to see him kind of have some, some cool moments here is, is awesome. So um, just love how they sent him out. Mm-hmm. Um, with some of Alfred's men to try to find Uhtred. Yeah. Because I think Alfred did recognize that he does owe a lot to Uhtred. I don't think I don't think Alfred was really against it. I think he was just kind of like, yeah. what can I do? I don't know where he's at. 
you know? Right, right. He, no, he I think Alfred, the slavery. it's not that he didn't want to save Uhtred. It's just like, he's like, well, what am I supposed to do? You know? Yeah. Like, and I don't I, know. Anything I think could Ethelfled, be... too, was actually all about. Well, that's one of the things I love about the show, is that whenever Alfred and, and um, Aylesworth talk smack on Uhtred, or the kids are always on Uhtred's side. Yeah. <laughs> always. Uh-huh. So... Yeah, so Ethel Flood also had a little, um, helped out a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so but, that leaves us at the end of the episode. Uhtred gets sold into slavery. Like, yeah, I mean, you you see they're marching him down to the beach to this this slave ship, and he tries to break free. He him he like kind of makes like a signal to Halig. They take the guys on, but Halig like like almost instantly gets overwhelmed by like three or four dudes yeah, they just captured again. They don't have weapons and they don't have yeah Uhtred does like a drop kick on this one dude like yeah. a running <laughs> drop kick sweet move and but again like their hands are tied behind their back you know or or they're at least tied up and they've got like tons of guys against yeah, them just, yeah. and Uhtred's instantly you know captured again and the the slaver is like you're you're not a warrior anymore you're a slave that's the end of that um, episode. Yeah. There. What was your your favorite moment from that too? Probably just seeing, uh, hearing that they were gonna send Ragnar after them. Probably. Yeah, I think hearing they were gonna send Ragnar was mine. Yeah, meeting Klappa was cool. When and they then, saved Uhtred was pretty awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's there's another scene too where like the the abbot is um you know whispering to Guthred about uh Uhtred you know and all that. And then, like, in the background, uh, Clapp is just, like, wrestling a guy. They're both, like, shirtless, and he's just, like, pile-driving him and stuff. Yeah. And, like, everyone around them is just, like, kind of watching, clapping and things like that. Yeah. That was, was kind of a cool scene, too. Because yeah. they, ha- they have, like, the plotting going on, but at the same time, there's, like, all this funny, like, stuff going on behind them. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think my favorite moment, though, you're right, I think it's when... Ragnar gets called upon because you're just like, yes, mm-hmm. let's go. Yeah, right. But that leads us into one of my least favorite episodes in all of The Last Kingdom. This is the most frustrating one is what we were oh, talking so, about. Yes. Good episode, but it's just... <sighs> so, where do we start? Uhtred the Slave, yeah. Uhtred the Slave, yeah. Start out where we left and, off. He's a slave. Him and Halig. They're on a boat. Um, that's like yeah, and they have to row, row, row your boat. Yeah, row, and row, row your boat. Gently oh, it's across. It's pull. It is, is pull. They, they do say. say pull, but they are rowing. Yeah. Yeah. They say pull. They're down like below deck with with the oars pulling, um, rowing, mm. and I think in front of Uhtred is Halig, and behind Uhtred is this other guy that keeps talking to him, who, um. Honestly, didn't think he was going to be a character, but he, he turns into like one of the most beloved characters from that point on. Yes. His name's Finnan. Mark Rowley. Yeah, plays Mark Finnan. Mark Rowley, man. Um, so there's this Irish dude sitting behind Uhtred, and he just keeps he, he kind of talking to him the whole time. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. they're slaves together. They, again, I didn't think he was going to be anybody at first. He was just mm-hmm. a slave. And... Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we find Uhtred. Uhtred is they're they're on a boat somewhere. Yeah, and the, and the then, slavers they're mean to them. They're you know they're oh, whipping they're holding, them. Yeah. They they keep yelling pull pull pull. It's over and over and over again. Yeah. And at first Uhtred is like very kind. He's like we're gonna get out of this. Like just you know we just gotta figure it out. And he's pretty confident still. And and he's even when he's yelling pull, he's even like looking at those guys like he's going to get revenge somehow. And he's kind of being as confident as he can be as a slave. Yeah, he's yeah, he's still Uhtred. He's just still trying Uhtred to buy this his point. time. Um, yep. He sees like one of the slavers, they like throw like an apple down or something. And like a bunch of guys jump on it and like are fighting and like scrambling yeah. for it. And Uhtred just kind of like looks at that and he's like, you can tell Uhtred's like, I'll never be that that way. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah. just like, oh, you'll be like this or something like that. You know? Yeah, exactly. Pretty much showing they're trying to make Uhtred lose his dignity. You know. Meanwhile, um, Aelfrich is on his way, skipping along to um, meet with Guthrid because they had made this alliance uh, based on 
the condition that Guthrid would give him Uhtred's head. And I guess um, they didn't quite understand that Elfrich meant literally. <laughs> <laughs> so so he shows up. He's got he's got all the men with the spears. They came. They're all sitting around. And Elfrich is cool at first. He's like, all right, yeah, cool. Thanks for uh, welcoming us and everything. Uh, where's where's his head? Where's Osbert's head? <laughs> <laughs> he, he tells him i think he the abbot's like he's like asked for his head and the abbot's like uh, he, he doesn't really make any comments and then yeah. guthred's like i sold him into slavery he's as good as dead good as dead and he's and, like yeah he just freaks out elfric freaks is like out. i have been marching for six days and yeah. just like and he's like I, I wanted to give you 200 spears for Uhtred's head. It was yeah, so like, easy. How hard is that? Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted one head. Just one head. <laughs> so, I mean, like, and so, and the brothers are there, too. Citric and uh, Siegfried and Eric, rather. Sorry. Yeah, they're, they're just kind of observing. There. And they yeah. see that this plan uh, is not going to go. Yeah. yeah. Because, and, because Elfrich is just like, well, you know, you, you didn't bring your side of the agreement so i'm out yeah he ditches he gets up he, he leaves and then the brothers, the, the brothers like, are like we're gonna well, leave too then we're gonna leave too because now we don't stand a chance against kiatan <laughs> without those men yeah um because like now, their mission to kiatan's to this fort i mean to raid a fort isn't easy because no. if they have the supplies they're hunkered down i mean like it's I it's tough they're to get planning in. on just like, yeah so abbot idrid then he proposes He's like, what if we get Gisela, to marry uh, Guthred's Elf. sister, to to marry Elfric? Gisela's like, I don't want to do that. So she leaves and she gives Citric yeah. a note. It's because Gisela's pretty smart. Yeah, she's pretty smart. She's a good-hearted person, too. She doesn't want to be used, either. She doesn't want to be used for you know bartering and things like that. I mean, who would? But So she runs away to, I think she goes to a nunnery or something. Yeah, she leaves and she hides out in a nunnery. Um, meanwhile, all right, she gave the note to Citric, and Ragnar and H- Hild's with Ragnar, right? Yeah, Hild, Ragnar, and a group and of men. Stiapa, some other yes. guys. Yes. They all ride up to uh, Efferwich to talk to Guthred to yeah to see where what they did, who they sold Uhtred to, where he's at, getting information yeah. they can. Yeah, and while they're in front of Guthred, when they come and meet Guthred, Citric, he, he like. He like think, puts the note in an apple or something. Maybe? Yeah, I think he does. Yeah. And then he gave it to a little girl to go and run up and give to Hild. So she now she knows where uh, Gisela's at. She's yeah. the only one. But uh, everyone else, you know, Guthred, you know, basically is a dead end. And Ragnar's like, "Tell me who, Lord. Tell me who." Yeah. And he just ignores them. And then they go out and they they ride out to a slaver. Then they cut back to the boat and Uhtred and his bros they're starting to kind of break down yeah Halig loses it first yeah he's he's like I need I need land I need land and, Uhtred, and he just like yeah. gets out and he's freaking out and like at this point too they're looking pretty rough so they they, real they rough. must have been on there a while and yeah. they've got like tattered hair and they've got there'd blisters been, there'd um, been a storm at one point and like they're standing in water that was like oh, shin right. high and like that's they're right. worried about their skin, like they don't want, yeah, because if you're in water too long, your your skin will rot. Right, right. So they're um they're trying to you know bucket water out on top of having to row, and um yeah, Halig starts breaking down. I think Uhtred gives him like a pep talk though. Yeah, um, he he kind of freaks out, and then they I think they beat him back down. They whip the the, the slavers whip him back down, but then Uhtred jumps on top of him to like shield him from the whips. And yeah. Finn's yeah. like, "We'll hold him. We'll hold him. We'll hold him. Don't worry about us." So Uhtred's really like getting the whip whipping now because he's on top of Halig, and he he like this is my bro moment here is yes. he's like he's like just talking to Halig. He's like, "You are a warrior. You yeah. fought with me at Ethington." You are Halig, and he's just like telling him all these things, like, yeah, because you can tell Halig's like losing his identity right now. He's he's losing identity, you know, and he's he's just freaking yeah. out. Like he's been on this boat. It's worst case scenario right now. I mean, you yeah, go wait, from man. Yeah. being like in a real good position to being a slave, and right. and 
Utre is just giving a great promo. I mean, just great. And the, the fact, too, that he was taking the whippings, too, you know, yeah. shielding them, you know, I mean, just it just shows, like, and, like, how he gets people to him. You right. know what I mean? It just shows right. how people are drawn to him and why they want to follow him. You can um, tell Utred, Utred's still clinging on there because you were talking about the water and, um, like, in the yeah. boat, and he, he's bailing the water out. Uh, even yeah. though they're tired because he's like, we can't escape if our feet are rotting, you know. And that's when, like, Finn, right. too, is kind of, like, helping him out. And he's like, I, you're right. You're right. We got to bail. You can tell Utrecht is kind of getting a little concerned now. He's kind of breaking down, you he's know. Start, he's starting to show some signs, and that that's going to kind of continue throughout the episode. It gets more and more and more. But meanwhile, while this is happening, Alfred um, is still trying to marry Ethelflaed. Um, and he's got somebody in mind. The um, He's got Mercy in mind, actually. Yeah, Mercy. Yeah. He thinks Mercy would be a great ally. And so <laughs> it's kind of a funny scene. This is a great um, scene. So the Mercian king, Cheowulf, wants, uh, he comes and he's trying to barter Alfred for men. He wants men. Mercy wants men so they can fight off the Danes on their own land. Yeah. And Alfred like is totally like just ignoring that. Like he like he just keeps saying, like, yeah, like so you you're gonna marry um you know, like, trying to come up with a bride price and stuff. Yeah. And Chael Wolf is like, I want men. And Alfred's like, like, did you try the wine? <laughs> he's like <laughs> And over yeah. and over and over, Chael Wolf's like, I want men and I want swords. Chael Wolf kind of gets a little worked up that his heart stops pumping. Yeah, Chael's a really old dude. I mean, he's super great, old. Great character. I mean, yeah, cool the, character. The, I kind of wish we had a little bit more of him. The, like the two to five minutes we see him, I like instantly love this dude. He's just like, I keep speaking about warriors, and you just want to talk about marriage. And yeah, and he gets up and like like you said, his heart starts pumping. He's he's yeah. an old guy yelling, you know. Yeah, and he dies <laughs> right on the table there. They they proposed that Ethel Flood would marry um, the the uh, future king, the prince, who looked like a cool dude. Um, his name's Ethelred. He looked like a cool dude at first. You know, he looks nice. Cherwolf dies right at the table. <laughs> and everyone's he, like, he, oh. he had his name, too, written on a note. And, like, yeah. Aylesworth comes Aylesworth over just and just goes like, right over, takes it out of his, like, dead hand. <laughs> And, like, looks at it. She doesn't care. She doesn't care that that guy just died right, right at the table. And um, sure enough, you know, it's it's Ethelred, right? Yeah, it's Ethelred then. And I think he, yeah, he's, like, the prince or the king to be now Yeah. since he died. Yeah. And the, so they, they talk about a bride price then for Ethelred. And that's really all we see then of that episode. But, I mean, at this point, he kind of seemed cool. He also kind of seemed cocky when he, he was talking to Alfred. But... It was also pretty clear, too, that Mercia did not want to be another, like, arm of Wessex is what, the, right. like, Chael It wanted to be saying. its own like, nation. Yeah. It didn't want to just serve Alfred. Like, they wanted to He said to that be... to Alfred. He's like, like, no, you are Wessex and we are Mercia. You know, like, trying to make that clear to Alfred. Yeah. We, we said before, like, characters will come into the show, be introduced, and, like, die the same episode and you'll miss them. But, like, this guy literally comes in one scene. And, and dies in that in scene. The, and he was and a cool like, character. He was the coolest, like, character that, like, introduced, you know. Yeah. I mean, well, not the coolest, but, like, he had a great he had a great outing for what he had. He did have I a mean, really good outing. <laughs> he was good. Meanwhile, also, Sven is also sent at some point to go and, and hunt down Uhtred. Yeah. Because yeah. Canton wants Uhtred dead. Before he actually gets his slavers, before Sven gets there, Ragnar and his group, they get there to the slaver. And he basically pays him coin, and uh, he doesn't get a lot out of him. The slaver just says, well, like, they're on this boat, but they're not going to be back to this beach until, like, after winter. Because they're going to yeah. go, like, to Iceland and do some stuff. And, like, I don't know exactly where all they're going to be in between then and then. And, like, you've just got to watch the beaches till they come back. So Ragnar just kind of well, like, I guess we got to watch. Ragnar's, like, all expenses paid vacation on the coastline <laughs> there. And he sets yeah. up his, like, beach towel and just gets a nice tan while he's oh. waiting to watch ships to come back. Great tan. Gets another, like, forehead tattoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, 
they are on they they get to land Ut, the slave ship and Uhtred, Finnan, and Halig, um, they're all they're like chopping down trees, mm-hmm. and they notice that a couple of guards are got goofing off. Like one okay, so first of all, one <laughs> of the like slave guys, there's like a guard standing against the tree, and the slave guy is just being mean to him for some reason. Yeah, and he's just throwing an axe, and he's like, "Don't move." <laughs> Like at the and tree the guard that guy this guy is, is like, leaning on, it yeah. just keeps like hitting the spot like right behind the other guy's head, like just throwing that. It was a knife or an axe or something. Yeah, just a classic Dane thing, I guess, is to yeah. to just goof off and. So they're kind of all on the same page. They'll kind of Uhtred, Finnan, and Halig. They'll kind of look at each other like this might be a good opportunity while well, they're goofing off for us to attack them, and then we can get away. No word spoken though. They're they're working on oh. this chain gang chopping down a tree and like yeah. they they're alternating. You know, each person goes up. They take a couple whacks of the tree with this pitiful right. little hatchet. But like they're they're watching this go down and like they're just like looking at each other like this is our time. Yeah. You know? So they yeah and they do try and at first they're getting away. They're making a break for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get to the beach. They run through the woods and like it's funny like they run like. Uhtred's wearing like triple X XL <laughs> pants. Like he's like holding them up, trying to run. Like their clothes mm-hmm. look awful. Yeah. And they get to the beach. They're almost there, but right on them are like the dogs and the the, slave the slavers. Them. Yeah. Yeah. They they do get to like a rowboat and they're trying to push it. And Halleck gets gets an arrow, right? Yeah. Halleck gets shot in the leg as they're trying to push this boat from the beach into the water. And so, Finn yeah. is even like, oh, another boat, like. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. we have to row a boat now to escape, <laughs> like, worst punishment. But Halley gets shot in the leg. Yeah, so he, like, he instantly goes down. But, yeah. like, Uhtred and Finn could have got away. If they left him behind and they just kept pushing the boat, they could have got away. But Uhtred but goes got... back for Halleck to try and bring him with them. They end up, you know, they're weak, they're tired, they just wasted their energy. They killed those guards. It broke yeah. out of their chains, you know. They're trying to pull Halleck, and it's just not working out. And the the slavers, I mean, just come up to them, and they just kind of just yeah. resign themselves. Oh, and here we go again. Instantly, then we go back. Then Uhtred and Finnan are back on the boat rowing, and yes. Uhtred's just pull. like crying, pull. and the the slavers yeah. just like pull, pull, and they, they and I think to... had we already seen the scene where like they're like in a pig stable. I think so. I think you're right. They were yeah. There's already like, a scene where like they were in like a pig pen, pen, and there was like they were on one side and on the other side were actual pigs, and the dude comes in with like a bunch of food and like gives almost all of it to the pigs and like and throws, throws a, like a couple pieces of bread for all the slaves. Yeah, for all the slaves. Now we finally see Uhtred dive at it and fight for it. Mm-hmm. But he, I think he broke it and gave it. Gave some to. He's still Finn and rationing his food to Finn and it. Uh, they're kind of like a little team. Yeah, they're kind of yeah. like a little team, the three of them. But now we're seeing Uhtred truly mentally breaking down, like. Yeah. Um, and so especially when they get recaught, now he's like totally like rock bottom. After they got recaught too, I mean, what they did then to punish Uhtred. And Finnan, and probably also too, because Halig during the the escape attempt, he got shot in the shoulder with an arrow, and then when they were trying to go on the boat, he got shot in the leg with an arrow. So they were probably looking at like this guy isn't going to make it anyway. But they like chain him to the front of the boat, so he's like like spread out on the front of the boat, Halig as as they're rowing, like yeah. he's like in the water, like on the front of the boat at the like right at the base. And oh man. They're rowing, and he's just like just getting the brunt of the wave and the force, and the, just pull it on the boat. Yeah, and, and it's not long. It's not long before he just he just dies right on the front of the boat like that. Just like Man, it, sad. Shred the, that was like such a crazy, just emotionally. And so, so here as a viewer, we're watching scene. this thing. You know, we're watching this thing, and you know we've already seen Uhtred be in slavery, which is not a lot of fun to watch because. You know, it's Uhtred, but he's not doing anything. You know, he's in slavery. And then yeah. they get their chance to get away, and you're just like, oh, you, they got to get away now so he can go back to being Uhtred. Yeah. And he get caught again, and then it only gets worse. And it's just like, it's just it's yeah, tough you, to watch. This this show, you normally get, like, satisfied by something. Like, um, 
when a mm-hmm. when a, a a dude is being a jerk, it might take a few episodes or so, but eventually Uhtred kills them. Someone kills them for being a jerk. You always get that like satisfaction. Mm-hmm. So when they were escaping, I thought we were there. I thought we were gonna get it, but yeah, it doesn't yeah. happen. They they go back Not to being slaves. Yeah. I mean, like that, like you said, like just at this point, it's just like it just feels frustrating and. Yeah. Um, it just like even though this is all happening in one episode, it just feels like it feels like it's you feel like, like it's way more watching, than that. Yeah, you feel like you've been watching Uhtred be a slave now for like a whole season, and you're just and, oh. and honestly, Uhtred's probably been a slave for what like a whole year. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like because they spent the winter out there, and so it's been a long time for Uhtred. Maybe yeah. not a maybe not a whole year, but a long time. Yeah, a very long. time. And when they get back to the beach, they get back to the the beach. Um, where Sven is there waiting for him, and Uhtred, like, at this point, Uhtred is not Uhtred anymore. He is, like, just a shell of a man. He is Mm -hmm. definitely going through a mental breakdown, maybe some PTSD kind of things. Yeah. And he's just kind of standing there staring at the ground, almost, like, muttering to himself, like, he looks crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, And it looks like Sven... Yes. So, oh yeah. So Sven. So he shows up with his men, right? Mm-hmm. And he finds Uhtred. He's like looking. He's like, Uhtred, is that you? You know? And Uhtred yeah, looks he, horrible. He doesn't even recognize him, really. Yeah. And he's like, all right, well, let's fight. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I will forever be known as the one to kill Uhtred Ragnarsson. You know? Mm-hmm. And he gives him a sword. Um, and Uhtred actually does perk up though. And he yeah. like, he's like, I will kill you. And, yeah, but like he but like is so weak, so like, weak. A sword is heavy for him. Like just yeah. lifting it up throws him off balance. He goes to the ground, and it it just looks like uh, Sven is gonna kill him here. Like not even in his who, time. But but right before that, there was there was a scene that probably got deleted where Ragnar and uh, was out tanning his buns, and he had his sunglasses on, and he, he and he's like, wait, from it... back to front. <laughs> yeah he rotated and when he rotated he saw his, was that a ship out there Did they get back oh crap so they're all running <laughs> and ragnar and hild and stiapa swoop in on horseback free. just whoo. yeah to kill the slavers kill some of sven's guys sven gets away mm-hmm. this is this is a crazy moment for me when when ragnar like goes up to utrid after he finds him, after like they they chase off everybody and yeah, he just, just like, sees Uhtred like that to see Uhtred like that, you know. And Uhtred just kind of breaks there. He just plug. starts crying. <laughs> Meanwhile, what the main slaver guy who was like whipping everyone the one that was yelling pull. Yeah, the one who was yelling pull pull to everyone. He's like stumbling away. And, and Finnin, yeah, like this sees little an this guy that we like didn't think was gonna be anybody. Yeah, he he picks up a sword and he goes after him. He's he's unarmed, but Finnan goes up and puts the knight the sword right up to his throat. He stabs him. Just or stabs right it through right through it. And then what's he do? He just looks at him and he says, "Pull, oh. pull." Oh. <laughs> oh man, what a moment, dude! And just pulls the sword out of his neck, and just the guy just drops the ground. Just it was so satisfying. <laughs> yes, just like um, and just the way he said it too, just like. Man, I mean, all the actors in this freaking bring it. But I mean, like that was just like another like little revenge scene, just like yeah, done so Pull. well. Yeah, Pull. I just love that great love. scene. Again, like like you said, Probably we didn't think this guy was gonna be anything. So there, like, like you just said a minute ago, like you, usually there's a satisfying moment, and there is with this one. You just kind of have to wait a while. Yeah, but it's so hard to see Uhtred like the way he is. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, he's been brought down to absolute rock bottom for him. And then it, it, it gets pretty emotional in a second. Yeah, they're they're all sitting around the fire. And it, it was really funny because Finnan was like, like asking about <laughs> Ragnar. He's like, that's your brother? Like, you guys don't even look the same. And like, they all kind of laugh. And then yeah. Ragnar, like all serious, like he knows Uhtred doesn't have any other like siblings or anything alive. But he's like, are you his brother? To Finnan. And Finnan's like, we are. We're bound. We're bound. brothers. And it was just like, whoa. Yeah. Like, just like a 
like cool moment too just real yeah. cool moment and that's like kind of i guess where finnan becomes like officially part of the utrid bro tribe true yeah uh utrid still looks though at this point around the fire pretty like like almost like he's in shock yeah he's he's not still. looking at anyone in the eye he's not really talking he's not he's really even eating yeah and Finn Finn's oh. bouncing back quicker than Utrecht is around everyone. Yeah. And that goes to this really emotional scene where mm. Utrid's like in his he still looks like a slave, his hair's super long, his and he he looks pretty shaggy, and he's sitting out in this field, it's like sunny, it's beautiful, and Hild comes out. And she like helps him wash and she's just trims standing his beard and his hair beard, his hair trying to help him feel like more human again. Mm-hmm. And she like gives him a pep talk. Yeah. And it is like, you, I get goosebumps right now. Just thinking about it. It was, And the music's, the music's going like the dun, 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 dun. Great music. Great. Like you said, the, it was like early morning, like lighting yeah. in the field that they're in. And, and Uhtred's just breaking down. And she she tells him, you know, you're a warrior. Yeah. You know, you're Uhtred, a Bevenber. Pretty much doing for him what he did to Halig on the boat, you know. Yeah. And, you know, she's just great, great bro moment from, from Hild there. And um, I think this is where she brings his sword. Yeah, she gives him serpent breath, his sword back. And he, he even says that he's holding it like it's heavier than I remember. It was, it was still great, though. Just great. Really um, good scene. To me, that's kind of an iconic scene from this season. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Actress Hild, the actress who plays Hild, Eva Burstethely. Uh You can look all Sounds these right. up, too. <laughs> <laughs> Google, too, if you want to see the names. But, uh, man, I mean, every like I said, everyone in the show brings it. But, I mean, she... Her and Alexander Draymond in the scene really just freaking brings it. I mean, yeah, just beautiful scene, just yeah. awesome. Probably it's it's either that or when Finnin says pull and pulls the sword out of that guy's neck. Yeah, it's probably my favorite moment from the episode. Yes, um, we're not even done yet. Like the episode not even could done. ended a while ago. <laughs> so what happens next? Uh, Ragnar said, you know, Utred says, hey, we're already in the north. Uh, why don't we go to Kjartan now with your men? I'm willing to do it. But Ragnar's like, no, I I swore to Alfred I'd bring you back to Wessex. So that's what I'm going to do. And Uhtred's like, come on. He's like, nope. And so they're heading back to Wessex. So, but Hild is like, oh, but on the way, uh, Gisela is at the nunnery here. And Uhtred's yeah. like, go in there. And, <laughs> and so they, they start riding there. Uh, meanwhile, at the nunnery, though, the, the priests found her. And like Abbot I said, they yeah. Abbot Idred, and they want to, you know, use her to get Elfric's men, Utred's uncle. So they're trying to get her to, to marry Elfric, and then he even tries to. He's like, I'm gonna have her married by proxy, and he has Elfric's yeah, yeah. priest there, and he's like, you will stand in for Elfric, and I'm gonna marry you and Elfric, and this will be a, an official marriage. And Gisela's just trying to get away. The Abbot like slaps her. Uh, got all the guys around holding her there, and then Utred comes into the nunnery, full force. Yeah. Um, and he sees this going down. And he's like, and he's not, he's not liking this at all. I mean, Gisela's bay now for him. He breaks it up. He says it's not true, and he's like, yeah, I will. Because um, <laughs> Abba Idred is like, uh, you know, she's married to Elfric in the eyes of God now, and, and... Utred's like. He's not here. And he's like, by proxy, you fool. Like, yeah. like that's a real thing. <laughs> yeah. Duh. <laughs> Duh. By proxy. Duh. And he's like, did did he hump her yet? And Gisela yeah. was like, nope. And he's like, well, then it's not a marriage. Because you, for real, like the law to yeah. make a marriage, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's still like that. But you had to consummate the marriage. You had to do the horizontal tango. To make it legally official <laughs> and even spiritually official. And so, like, he's like, well, it's not a marriage then. And the guy keeps persisting. And then uh, Ragnar is like, let's make her a widow. And, like, referring to killing the other priest there. 
uh, the guy's like, no, no, I have a wife. I have a wife. <laughs> you know? yeah. Uhtred wants to kill him. Uh, but then, you know, Hild and everyone's like, no, you shouldn't. Let's just leave. Yeah. And then he's leaving. And Abbot Idrid just, you know, thinks he's untouchable. Oh, you know, man. he just starts yelling things like, she's married. You're a pagan. You know, yeah. insulting her, calls her a bitch. And Uhtred just turns around and oh. puts a knife to his throat. And he's like, say she's married one more time. Yes. And he's like, she's married you. And then just stabs him right <laughs> in the gut. Great. Another great kill. Another great yes. uh, justice scene here. Uh, we're getting appalled. rid of all the evil people. Hild is appalled because she is. He, just killed, he just killed a man of God in a church. Like, I know. Like Hild's Hild's great, and again we we just talk about that beautiful scene, but like it's still annoying, just how like blind people are to like how evil that guy was. He was the one that like well, yeah. set up Uhtred into slavery. Yeah. He was the one you know constantly undermining them and everything, and she's still sad he got killed. Yeah, it's I frustrating. Think, like, I, think, I think she knew Idrid was not like a good guy, but like. I think it was just the the principle of killing a priest in a church at the time yeah. was not good. So, so anyway, are we done with the episode yet? No, no, not even. We close. go back to. Uh, <laughs> we are close. We are close. Uh, Uhtred, um, they go back to Winchester. Alfred's there. Alfred sees this as an a wonderful opportunity mm-hmm. to get Uhtred back into his service. And he says, oh, well, you know, it's nice to have you back and all, but uh, here you killed a priest in a church, which Alfred, um, you know, he loves priests. <laughs> if you don't remember, He's Alfred priest loves man. priests. He knew he knew Uther did it, but he says this, you know, I'm going to have to kill you. Yeah, he needs to do something for it. He has to act on it. So he said, I'm, you know, I guess I'm going to have to kill Ragnar since I put Ragnar in charge of this and it happened while Ragnar was uh was in charge or um you swear yourself to me and I'll let Ragnar go and Uhtred obviously doesn't want his brother to die after right. his brother just saved them it's his brother you know I mean about it Uhtred's pissed and he does it though he swears his sword to Alfred yeah man and here's the thing I don't get man because I don't know if they show it in this episode or the next one, but when he goes and tells him he swore his sword, he it's never says one, yeah. to them. It's in the next one. He never yeah. says to them why. Mm-mm. He never tells Brita and Ragnar why, and they're just like, why would you do that? And it's like... Uh, it's not till season three not that till he season eventually three he tells, tells Brita. someone. Yeah, he tells Brita. And, and she's like, oh, you know? She even yeah. has like a moment like at that point where she's like, she kind of forgives him for that mm-hmm. under the circus. Like, why couldn't you have just like gone, even if like it was discreet and didn't t- and been like, look, I had to do this. They were going to kill you if I didn't do this. Mm-hmm. I don't get the incentive not to tell them. Yeah. I don't I guess they didn't want him to think, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know if I think their rationale for Uhtred doing this was to like not burden Ragnar, I guess, with this guess information. He want to make, yeah, Ragnar feel like he owes Uhtred or something. Yeah, but that's a good point. I would still be like, dude, I didn't want to do this. Like, I w- I would have at least made something else. Though, like, they were gonna kill someone else, or yeah. they were gonna do this, or Alfred made a threat. Don't worry about it. I had to do this. Right. But I mean, this is another moment where we we talked about in the last one, and Uhtred says this too. You know, he says it in season three, but he says it at the beginning of the first book. Um, Alfred was a man that he loved and that he hated. And yeah. like again here, you just like you love Alfred for recognizing Uhtred's a good guy and you need to save him. But then you hate him, too, for seizing this opportunity yes. at, when Uhtred's vulnerable. Uhtred was just a slave. Even Uhtred even says it like I was yes. just a slave, Lord. You're like, I don't want to have freedom. to serve someone. He he just takes advantage of him. He even threatens his brother. You know what I mean? It's just, Ugh. you know, his intention is because, like we said, Alfred's end goal. That's what he sees all the time. Like Just like how Uhtred always sees his blood feud with Carton and taking back Bevenber. Those yeah. are his, like, 
horse blinder things that he sees. Alfred always just sees England becoming yeah. one nation mm-hmm. instead of a bunch of different kingdoms. And he sees Uhtred as the guy that's going to get him there. And so he takes, you know, every advantage that he can out of this, but it's it's still just frustrating. But yeah, I mean, let's uh let's jump in episode 4 then. We already kind of started talking about it. So this is the last one we'll do today. As you can tell, there's a lot to talk about in each episode, and it's, you know, it tends to run <laughs> really long each time. But, I mean, how could you not talk about any of these moments, you know? No, yeah, I mean, these were these were all dense, you know? Yeah. They were dense. Other shows, I feel like we could be like, oh, we don't need to talk about this episode, you know? Mm, but, exactly. like, each episode is just packed full. So, Uhtred and Gisela are doing well in episode four. They got married uh, by Bianca, which is pretty cool. And now... Finally, Uhtred and Ragnar, you know, they have their plan to go and get Kjan. I was really surprised that this was, like, already starting to happen. This is what I was talking right, about this earlier. Seemed like, this seemed like it would be the pinnacle, almost, uh, moment. Yeah, it almost seemed like one of the pinnacles of the show, you know, arc. Yeah, the series. Right. right. Where I Season think 2, Episode 4, we're, we're already we're talking about doing this it. battle. Right, we're, yeah. Uhtred and Ragnar, they want to save Tura. And again, we, we talked about earlier, Ragnar's mad at Uhtred for swearing the oath, and Uhtred doesn't explain why. Does Gives no explanation. So Uhtred is sent by Alfred to go kill Siegfried and Eric, because he wants to make sure they don't overthrow Guthred in Ever- mm-hmm. Everwitch. And Guthred has just been a, a bumbling, stumbling oh, fool. Oh my goodness. Since, since Uhtred has been a slave, because... I remember there's even one moment where he asks Abbot Idrid, he's like, I need advice from you. I don't have a commander. And the Idrid's yeah. like, I don't know. I'm not a soldier. And just like, <laughs> and it just like shows like, what a piece of crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, but, but yeah, so the brothers now, Siegfried and Eric, they're back. They're raiding now. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, like you said, like they're concerned that Guthred, the, you know, the newly appointed Christian King is going to get overthrown because he doesn't know what the heck he's doing. Right. Um, also, so, Aethelwald, who hasn't done yeah. a lot recently. Uh, Aethelwald, which is Alfred's uh, nephew, who sh- who was, I guess, in the bloodline, the next to be the rightful heir of Winchester. Uh, but because he's a drunken, horned fool, he didn't get that. Uh, his, right. his father left it to Alfred. And probably the best choice, but it was a good Aethelwald has, has still been serving Alfred. He's never really, you know, he's always had it in Alfred his mind that he should be king. And he kind of even thinks of himself as king. Just as yeah, and Aethelwald's always really as, trying to do things in his own interest. Yeah, but Alfred sends him to, with Uhtred on the mission. Aethelwald in this season, you actually kind of start liking him a little bit. I was thinking that as well. I was going to say that too. He actually um, has a moment later when he like speaks pretty like intelligently and very articulately. And you're like, whoa, like this guy is like maturing. Yeah, you um, really think he is. Alfred doesn't like he doesn't care at all about Kiaten. Yeah, because um, someone comes up to him and they're they're telling him like, oh, Utra is just gonna take his brother Ragnar and they're gonna kill Kiaten. And Alfred's yeah. like, why should I care? That's a Dane. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Let let him do his things. He's sworn to me. I know, you know, he serves me, but just in case, Stiapa, yes. which is his man, he's like, Stiapa, if, if Uhtred looks like he's going to start taking power uh, up north there and, like, become a king or something, you need to assassinate him, and I'll let that happen. But he's like, otherwise, I really don't care what he does. And now we're coming up to a pretty cool scene here. Oh, very cool scene. The brothers, Siegfried and Eric, are camping out, and Uhtred think, uh, decides he's going to go sneak up on them, on Siegfried and Eric. I he guess doesn't we'll want to see... risk Ragnar's men. Yeah, so, like, so Ragnar have... and Brita are staying back, and he's like, let me take care of this. I know what I'm doing. Alfred work. You know, This is an right. Alfred mission. Right. He doesn't want to use up any of Ragnar's men, who he wants all of them for Kjartan's mission. He's like, right. I'm going to do this. This is an Alfred mission. You just yes. stay back. Right. So Stiapa's like, hey, I work for Alfred. I'll come with you. And Finnan's like, well, like, I'm bound to you, man. I'm coming with you. I'm your bro now. Yeah. So it's really like the three of them doing like this Navy SEAL mission yeah. here. Uhtred 
sneaks into uh, it's kind of a funny scene um siegfried's siegfried's tent and where it's like raining now like yeah all the danes are just like chilling in their tents because it's raining and it looks early know. morning i think yeah too. some are still sleeping and siegfried's outside of his tent peeing <laughs> and so utrid's waiting for him he's got a, there's a girl in the bed and while utrid's like sneaking up behind siegfried he gets like the girl like clubs him from behind <laughs> She starts wailing on him. She's yeah. wailing. I think she knocks him down. Even she does. Yeah. She. What did she hit him with? Something huge. Yeah. I, I think it was a like a wooden stick, or maybe it even been like the the blended edge of the sword. It might have been like the hilt of the sword that she just might like, have been like hit him with yeah. that or something. Yeah, like but he goes she, down. Yeah. So Man. Siegfried comes in and they they go at it, right? Yeah. Pretty cool Great fight. fight. They just so, have like he knocks. Utrid's sword out of his hand because he's stumbling. Yeah. And they're just like bare fists. Bam, bam, bam. Well, see, each other off the bed. pretty good warrior. Yeah. yeah. Utrid's going to win this fight. And yeah. he, he cuts off Siegfried's hand. Yeah. And Siegfried's um, just like, <gasps> oh, yeah. Just like look at his stump. And just like, at this point, his, his girlfriend that was in the bed just runs out and she's like, yeah. Raiders, Raiders, and then like, uh, like the whole camp is waking up. Stiapa and Finnan are like running up, and Stiapa just clotheslines this chick. Like, yeah, as they're, as they're running to Utrecht, he just clotheslines. <laughs> Finnan makes like some comment about like, did you need to do that or yeah. something? Like that. <laughs> and and then, Utrecht um, just has yeah. uh, Siegfried Ooh. out there, like out in front of the tent. Finnan and Stiapa are like right next to him, and he's like. Let them see me. Let everyone see me. All of the Danes just like circle them. Yeah. And Siegfried's brother Eric is out front. Yeah. The level headed one again. It's Siegfried's yelling, kill him. Just kill him. I don't care if I die. Kill him. And and Eric is like, there will be another day, brother. There will be another day. Mm-hmm. Like, and he's like, what do you want, Uhtred? Um, And Uhtred's like, you will all leave. You'll take one boat and you will leave. And he said, for my brother's life, I will do this. Eric is Eric's like calm. He's like, well, he's like, you know, kind of de-escalating the situation. He stays yeah. on point. He, he stays. stays on... He's worried about his brother, but he's like, he's got a level head. He stays on point. Siegfried's yelling, "Kill him! Kill him! There will be another day, brother. Another time." They agree, and you know, Utrid gets out of there, and yeah, they immediately he cauter- leaves. Yeah, yeah he instantly they cauterize his hand in the fire. Pretty raw. Good bro, good brother though. Uh, good brother, yeah. So there's a good bro moment there. That's that's actually um, an awesome bro moment. Great bro moment. It's, that doesn't have anything an to do with Utrid. Yeah, yeah. It's not an Utrid bro group, but it's it's definitely Eric. Uh, Eric keep going level ahead. They got a lot of good bro moments, the two of them. Yeah. So anyway, they um they get out of there. They go to Guthrid and Efferwich. Mm-hmm. And what's he do? Goofer's just having himself a nice little meal. <laughs> and, and Utra just tosses Siegfried's hand onto the table. Another great toss is what I was thinking when I watched this. Remember how we were talking in our first, our, or yeah, it was our, our part two of season one, how Utrecht is tossing the pig fat perfectly onto the ships? Yes. Remember? Like, yes. Perfect toss, you know. Guy. He, perf- yeah. Perfect toss of a human hand lands right on the plate yeah <laughs> guthrid like is super apologetic he's like he looks totally spineless here and utrid utrid's like i'm not gonna forget what you did to me Mm-mm. like they storm in and guthrid is just you know being pretty spineless and uh after he throws the hand i think i think they start leaving or something or like yeah. no he tells he tells guthrid you're gonna give me your men so that uh, we can uh, invade Kjartan. Like you're, yeah. you're gonna team up with me and Ragnar. You're giving me your men. He tell, he's telling him what yeah. he's gonna do. Yeah. And he's like, how do I know that that's Siegfried's hand? How do I know that he's actually left? How do I? And just like Utra just jumps over the table. Yeah. And like Ragnar holds back Bianca because Bianca's kind of like, no, yeah. no, no, no. And then. And then Finnan like tells Stiapa like, "No, big man, you're not going anywhere." Utrecht just jumps over the table like Guthred, yes. and just like gets up in his face and is just like telling him like, 
I will kill you if you don't do this, you know, after what you did to me, what you did to Halig, oh. I will never forget. Because, yeah, because he also was trying, when when Uhtred got put into slavery, he was also like, why are you taking Halig? You know, leave Halig out of this. Yeah. It, it was completely unnecessary for him to send Halig. And it just, right. he really sent Halig to his death, is what he did, unnecessarily. Not that sending Uhtred was necessary, but, no, uh, like, just a real piece of crap. So anyway, they get the men, and they make a plan. Citric had told Uhtred there was no weakness in this fortress at Dunholm. Mm-hmm. But Uhtred's like, there's a weakness. Yeah. There's a weakness. He actually he actually says to Citric, uh, like, you lied to me. And Citric's just kind of yeah. like, like shit yeah, his Citric. pants looking around. Like, no, he didn't. And he's like, well, I, what? Are, what? And, like, and uh, Uhtred's like, you said there's no weaknesses. Mm-hmm. He's like, there's a door. To the, I forget what he says. It's like a laundry door or something to the south side Whatever, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's like, like, ooh, like, that can't put an army through that door. Yeah. And Utra's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need an army. <laughs> Donald, Donald Trump face. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump. Utra just goes Donald Trump face. Yeah. Because so, Utra had checked out the fort when he was, you know, also yeah. doing his arts and crafts with the heads on the spears. Back at Dunholm. He's doing some reconnaissance, you know. Some reconnaissance, some arts and crafts. There's some hobbies Uhtred has. So anyway, they, they make their plan. And their plan is to... Actually, they do it like at night. They go and they... All stealthily, like one at a time, they run across this field to get up against the wall. And Uhtred's leading this group. And I think it's... I'm trying to remember who it is. It's Uhtred, it's Finnan, it's Biaka, Deapa... Deapa. Stapa, and Citric. And Citric. I think there might be a couple more like a couple more background guys, but those yeah. are the main. And then Brita and Ragnar have got a bunch of men that are going to storm the front gate. And so they wait there, like, I don't know how long, but they probably wait hours it's up against that when wall. Because it's nighttime. It's and daylight. They wait, yeah, yeah, they wait till like morning when some guard comes out with like these women who are doing laundry or whatever. Yeah, they're washing. And then, so the door's and... open, and they don't think there's anything going on. And they're up against the wall. Was Ethelwald with them, too? That's right. Ethelwald. Yeah. Ethelwald. 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 Alfred's nephew. And, oh, and, th- and this is the part we were talking about before. This, they decide this is where they need to start the plan. And so they shoot up a flaming arrow. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. And, and Rita, they cut to they cut the shot. To Ragnar's group, and every single person in the group is just like, like looking at the ground, like kicking dirt, <laughs> bored. And Brita like is also doing that, and she like happens to glance up at the precise moment that that arrow is flying through the air, and she's like, "Oh wait a minute, look!" <laughs> Signal. How easy that would have been that nobody see would have would have seen that. Almost no one would have seen that. Because like you said, the plan is to have a main force attack the front gate, so everyone's right. paying attention to that. Well, While meanwhile, in. Shred's si- yeah. SEAL Team Six is going in the back, and um, uh, I love that SEAL Team Six. Uh, Utred SEAL Team Six adventure totally. is always my favorite. This, and by the way, this is probably my favorite episode, at least this part of the season. I don't know if it's my favorite yeah. of the whole season. I still have to watch the last four episodes again, because I remember the. Episode eight is really good too, but episode eight's amazing. Yeah, uh, this one is definitely one of my favorite episodes out of the whole show. And then Uhtred and his crew though are going and they're jumping down this little hole where the door is, and they're just leaping on these guards and just. Ariel no kills. Oh man, man. <laughs> Uhtred has a great one. Yaka jumps down too with his yes. gloves. Oh my god! Crazy scene. They so meanwhile. So Brita, they all they did see the the target. Thank God Brita saw it. <laughs> and otherwise and, they would have just been inside the fort with no distractions, all getting killed. You know. They get into like a shield wall like turtle thing. Oh my. And they god. charge with a battering ram up against the the gate. Oh my god. It's this, this scene. So Clappa, Clappa, Ragnar, and a bunch of other guys are holding like this big ram, and they just. Just run at the door. Ragnar and meanwhile, they've got so another cool. wave of people waiting. Another wave of troops yeah. haven't gone up yet. 
Yeah. And then while they're running up to the gates to Ra- Ragnar is like shield wall and just like and anytime I hear shield and. wall, yeah, my my like I get a little man gasm. But then like just it was just such a awesome scene. They're like hut, 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 about hut. the archers. Oh yeah. Where like they would have archers, they have shields. Shields would open up. Archer would shoot. Shields back up. It was so cool. So cool. Yeah, so, so awesome scene. So all the all the people inside the fort, they're paying attention to Ragnar's assault on the front there. Yeah, they're and like shooting arrows, throwing spears, trying to stop those people from breaking down the door. The door looks pretty tough. It's yeah, going to take some it's... time. Uh, in fact, I don't think they break it themselves. I think they have to get let in. Yeah. Because uh, Uhtred and his group, they come in and they go fighting. And this fortress, yeah. This fortress is known as being, like, unbreakable, like, from the outside. Yeah. And that's what, like, they were all saying before. That's why they needed so many men and so many. Yeah. They were trying to get alliances all the time. Yeah. But then I think Uhtred's, their plan before was just to wait them out. They were just going to cut off things going in. I think so, yeah. Yeah, so Uhtred, meanwhile, has come in from the back. And he's just, like, walking through, like, nobody's around. And then all of a sudden, somebody sees them coming from behind, and they start the fight inside. But it's, like, too late. Like, they're already close to the gate. And they... Yeah. They're working their way there. They're they're even the people at the the front of the 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 like the ramparts or like the front of the fort. They don't even notice what's going on because they even like a couple Occupy. of their bow guys shoot them down from behind. Yeah. Uh, they're working their way, and then some guys come up and like start trying to come after Uhtred's group, and like it's just like a mad dash, like shield wall fend off. Yes. Stiapa goes up to the the gate, and he's like. Is it? throwing off like the the gate the the supports to to keep the gate up and meanwhile like ragnar's group they're still fighting there's like one scene where like one of the guys up top of the like the fort gets shot and like lands on their their shield yes. wall turtle and they just yeah. like without like communicating they all just protocol. like roll them off protocol <laughs> protocol <laughs> oh, man. just oh my god just like yeah just so freaking cool and uh, Props to the people who coordinated that battle scene. Yeah, the, the stunt, the stunt choreographers and coordinators. Man, crazy. So uh, anyway, so awesome battle. Yeah, Stiapa up, lets them in. Lets them uh, in. And, cl- and then I, they I send the like second Clapa wave. Comes in with his like tiny helmet too. Yes. And his like giant arms. Yeah. And then Great they send scene. like a, a second wave of troops, and by that time, like the people inside Dunholm are just there's no hope for them. They're screwed at this point. They're, They're screwed. Like, Uhtred's plan worked so perfectly. Like, they had no chance. Yeah. One, uh, and once, like, they all come in, Uhtred's like, shield wall! And, like, oh, awesome. another great shield wall. We got so many great shield walls yes. in, like, a matter of minutes. Yes. And and they've like, got them, like, just cornered. They're just, they're there's nowhere they can go. To the back of the fort, yeah. yeah. And Kiatan, um is still alive. And his men have dwindled quite a bit. Tura! Heard the ruckus, and she broke out. She broke out with her pups. Mm-hmm. Sven is like in the hall or whatever. Kian can see this happening. Yeah. Or no, he sees. I think he sees the aftermath of it. But the dogs. She's coming out with the dogs, and like the dogs just go after Sven, and they like kill Sven. They tear him apart. They tear him apart. Worse, worse than uh, Ramsay in Game of Thrones, I think. Yeah, I think you see more because like I think you in do. Game of Thrones, oh, they, they show like a face thing. Yeah, they show like skin being peeled off and like Sven gets his his uh his comeuppance here for sure. Oh, man. Just torn apart by these dogs and Carton, his men are just getting backed up by. The thing about Sven though, the thing about Sven is like you never like Sven, but no. he's also not. You never like are afraid of him. You're never like he's kind of also spineless like. Daddy's he's boy. Always kinda, he's always running away. He's always he's a coward. Yeah. He's a bad dude, but he's a coward and Yeah, he's a real yeah. piece of crap. But but that's not the satisfying kill. Mm. So like Kjartan <sighs> sees this go down though, because Utre and Ragnar's army has shield wall backing them up. He doesn't have as many men. And Ragnar yeah, He sees he sees through the window Sven dead. Yeah, Kjartan sees Sven. And at that point, torn John's up dead. like whole world has just been torn down. Again, props to the guy who plays Kjartan. I mean, he doesn't have a lot to do in the whole show, but I mean, just like the emotion he shows, even at, at this moment when he just looks over and sees his son uh, 
son yeah. Sven torn up is just really good. I mean, uh, it's a solid Alexander Viking, solid, Wilhelm, solid yeah. Viking, solid, solid Viking. bad guy. Um, and he just basically like goes out. Well, Ragnar calls him out. He says, yeah, Ragnar calls either him out. all your guys can die, or just you and me can fight. Yeah, is make we, the square. We, we did. We mentioned how Uhtred has had this blood feud against them because uh, it was his, you know, his family got killed. But this is Ragnar, right. Ragnar's father, Ragnar the Elder. That was his, his dad forever. He was raiding with his dad all the time, and he's a, you know, how crazy is that he's away. They come home and find out someone killed your dad, kidnapped yeah. your sister, you know, has yeah. been abusing her for years, like. I think he actually has more against Kjartan than Uhtred does Uhtred, here. Absolutely. Going into the battle, I was kind of thinking Uhtred's going to kill Kjartan. But then yeah, but here... That's, that's Ragnar's kill all the this way. This is Ragnar's kill. And Ragnar, they make the square. Pretty good fight. But Ragnar has just so much pent-up rage. Yeah. <sighs> and Kjartan's even taunting him. He's saying things about his sister and his family yes. and things. And yeah. Ragnar just goes off. He kills him. Oh, great. Oh, and he gets but him he, down and he like stabs through his arm, like yes. his sword hand, and then he kicks, kicks away him. the sword. Because he doesn't, he's not, he does not deserve Valhalla. Yeah. And he's just like yeah. begging. He's like, my sword. Like, he's not begging for his life. He's like, my sword. Because he wants, again, yeah. to Their get belief. to Valhalla. You have to die in battle. You have to die wielding your sword. Like, I need it to get to Valhalla. That's their afterlife, you know? Yeah. And Ragnar is like, you aren't Ragnar. getting that. Yeah. You're not and getting he that. stabs him. And he stabs him a couple more times. And, and then everyone's more cheering. Times. Everyone's, everyone's like, cheering at first. Yeah. You know, total uh, redemption. But then you, like, then you see, like, Ragnar's, like, bawling his eyes out. And he just keeps stabbing him, keeps stabbing, keeps stabbing, keeps stabbing. And like everybody stops kind of cheering. He's like, hey, hey, hey. Mm. <laughs> it's all just kind of like an awkward, like. It gets awkward. And then, like, I think Zibrita, or she's like, Ragnar. Think, yeah. And then Uhtred comes over and yeah. pulls him off, I think. Pulls him off. And but they're Ragnar's just both just crying, bawling their eyes out. And, and then Tora. Tora comes up. Yeah. She's standing there on the on the front front porch there. With the dogs, and they're like, they're like happy to see her. Mm-hmm. Uhtred and Ragnar, they're like relieved to see her alive, and she is not happy though. Mm-hmm. Like she's just been abused forever, and she, you know, what just wants someone to blame now too, and is just well, feeling yeah. bad. And she's she doesn't know why they haven't tried to come after her. Yeah, that's what she for, says for this too. While. Like... But to be honest, for a long time, Uhtred thought she was dead until yeah, they... late in season one. Um, and then Ragnar didn't know that she was alive. They, I think Uhtred in, in the first episode of Last Kingdom did not see her. She no. saw him when he snuck back onto um, uh, Ragnar the Fearless's land. Yeah, to, when he went and killed uh, yeah. Elfric's men, Scallion, Tora saw him go in there and she, like, you could tell she wanted to call out to him, but she didn't want to give him away and get him killed. But he didn't see her at all. Yeah, he didn't and, see her. He he assumed she died in the fire with everybody else. Yeah, so Ragnar didn't know until Uhtred told him, you know, and Uhtred didn't find out till, uh, and you know, and, yeah. episode eight. Meanwhile, Ragnar was a prisoner, so he couldn't do anything about it yet. They pretty much go to do it, I, almost as soon as they can. Uhtred probably could have tried to do something a little earlier. Try to. They were really trying to build up men, though. They, but they were. I mean, that was always what Uhtred's goal was. He was. He was always trying to get to Kiatin, even was, since the first episode of the season. Yeah, that's who, that was his motivation. For and then he right became now. a slave, right? So they were trying to save her, like the whole time. But she's okay. mad, and she's actually gonna like sick the dogs on them because she like blames them, mm-hmm. and was not expecting Bianca to step out. And Bianca is like Tura. He just goes like no, right in front of her. He just no, no, just like just straight. I am a friend. She doesn't know who he is, and she's just like looking at him all confused, like, "Why are you stopping me?" And you don't want to do this or whatever. And you can tell she just like is just confused and frustrated, and you know, rightfully yeah. so. And she just screams and runs back inside. And just yeah, yeah like when I saw Bianca do that, like I was I was kind of confused because I was like, "Does he know her?" Like I don't remember him ever meeting her. Or... 
right? I mean, it was great it, on think, his end. It was awesome on his end to step in there. I think it was probably a combination of like he probably felt like he had a place there. Um, he was probably sick of the fighting that day, the violence, and like. But I think Bianca maybe also just saw her as like somebody who needed, in his eyes, needed God. Yeah, Bianca oh. is a genuine priest from the end. He wants to do yeah. good. He he wants to help people. He's what you he, hope all priests are, right? Exactly. Yeah. Building a club and <laughs> jumping down, doing aerial attacks. <laughs> no, but you're yeah. right. He is like very good-hearted, very um, ethically correct in in most instances. He goes down and he talks to her some more while she's in her little like uh, cage that with all of her dogs, and they talk some more, and he tells her like. You know, your brother Uhtred is like one of the best men I've ever met. He's been trying to find you, you know, ever since he found out. Like, and then yeah. she even like says like, you know, Uhtred one time he saved me from Sven when we were kids. I was really hoping yeah. he would have done that sooner again, you know, and just like, yeah. it's just a, another just crazy emotional scene. They, they could have ended with the battle and just yeah. been like, there's the end of the, the episode or whatever. But I mean, again, they just... And you Uhtred know, and Ragnar, like, when she first got mad, looked at each other like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, they were just, they nailed it. I mean, um, Uhtred then, he's he goes to ride back to Winchester to serve Alfred. Ragnar takes Dunholm as his fort then. Uh, Breda stays with them. And uh, as they're leaving, like, you can just tell Uhtred is, like, so happy that they finally did the thing that he promised his brother they were going to do. As as he's leaving, Brita, who's who's always even been uh, pretty resentful to him ever since he started, you know, working for Alfred back in season one, even like kind of like kicks him on the butt and kind of like looks at him and yeah. like he like goes up to Ragnar and they just like bring their heads together. It's just like, man, just like a powerful scene. Oh, man. And then, oh, and then oh, as yes. he's riding out, he just looks so sad and like happy at the same time. Yeah. I mean, it's just like crazy just like that's that's probably the i love the battle everything afterwards with utred and just like showing like uh that stuff just all my like favorite stuff i mean oh man so emotional and heartfelt it's uh it's what makes the show great it really is and ragnar uh, he says to like utred at one point this is my favorite bro moment like good luck little brother like just like calling him brother because, like, Uhtred always wants to see, like, be part of the Ragnar family. He sees himself as, he calls himself Uhtred yeah, Ragnarsson. But that validates it, you know. That, yeah, like, from Ragnar, a real Ragnarsson. So um, awesome. Yeah. And it's, so, that's I mean, where... so that, that completes, like, the first half of season two. And it's pretty much, that's its own story right there. And it starts and it wraps up right, right there. Yeah, when we, when we pick up for the second half, we get a whole another. Three like, years have gone by. Yeah, three years. At least the next episode. So it's really kind of a good halfway point. Um, we'll talk more about, you know, that next episode, um, what happens. But I do, it does make me happy that, like, Uhtred had, like, a long time with Gisela, you know. And, yeah. And they were happy. And there was probably, there was, like, a, a long time of peace, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm sure some things happened. But for the most part, like, life was, like, really good for three years for him. Yeah. After that, you know, like they what have kids your, uh, and stuff. Yeah. What was, what was your favorite moment from uh, the, this episode? Like I mm. said, this this is my favorite episode. Probably when the whole battle scene, but when I really like how the scene where where Ragnar was stabbing Kiatan repeatedly, I like how that was done mm. because it just you could just feel the raw emotion from from Ragnar. Yeah. You know, and the fact that he couldn't stop. Just to me, that's probably like the most memorable moment. Yeah, because I mean, like I said, I I had always been thinking about Uhtred with his blood feud with Kjartan because that's what they were always showing. But I mean, that guy killed Ragnar's mother, his grandpa, his dad, you know, like mm-hmm. I said, kidnapped his sister, like, and just like he was just yeah. letting it all out there. Letting it all out. So that was really well done. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to uh, the guy who plays Ragnar. Tobias Santelman, just phenomenal. I mean, everyone, everyone's phenomenal. 
like I said. But yeah, yeah, that that is a good moment. My my favorite moment is just the battle in general. I mean, the soon is like. Like oh, they yeah, start the whole the aerial battle. kills yes. and Ragnar. Oh, maybe yells, even just wall. when he yells "shield wall" because it's like yeah. a powerful yell. Yeah, the way he yells it. Yeah. Favorite bro moment. What was your favorite bro moment from uh, the episode? Probably this one is is Siegfried and Eric's moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That is a good and, moment on Eric's end. Yeah. Yeah, and then after that, probably you know the heads together with Ragnar and and Uhtred. Um, yeah, that's mine. That's mine. I mean, we're going to talk a lot about Siegfried and Eric in the next episode, um, which you'll definitely want to hear about that, because that's probably, next one's probably one of my favorite overall storylines in Last Kingdom. Yeah, next, really unique so. storyline that they, they yeah, do. And really it. unexpected, yeah. So that, I would say, we'll talk a lot more about them, but it was pretty cool, kind of a foundation of their relationship together in this episode. Uhtred has, you know, really grown too. Like I said, he's he's not as immature as he used to be. He's still oh, yeah. he keeps getting acts more out yeah. every now and then. Uh, like killing the habit Idrid. <laughs> but I felt like that was just. I felt like that it was was. Anybody who was, was there, like you would, yeah. You would when think. you sell someone to slavery and then insult them some more and then try and marry off someone after you're yeah. like hitting them, like yeah, you you deserve some death. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So this is part one. We're gonna have part two coming out soon. So check that out if you haven't already watched our season one, part one and two. Uh, we we do the same thing for that. We do episodes one through four and part one, and then uh, four, through, four eight. through eight and or five through eight. eight. Yeah. Yeah, five through eight. Sorry. And we're wow. gonna do the same thing. Uh, here with part two so yes uh, stay tuned and you know check that out uh, you can check us out on youtube at the screen chronicles any podcast host you should be able to find us yes. sometimes we're like a little later i think on itunes i think like yeah. a day later or so um, after i post things so but if so if you see it on social media you could find us on Podbean though the day of our, yeah, or follow us on on uh, instagram and facebook as well we, we give um movie and show recommendations uh weekly there and you'll be updated on all of our episodes and everything so uh feel free to reach out comment on a post comment on a video or uh our podcast too and you know let us know if there's anything else you want us to do we've got you know a few recommendations from family and friends and things like that but uh let us know if there's anything else you want to hear all right asslings uh (laughs) destiny is all destiny is all